Live, PKA episode 277 with our guest, Harley. Kyle? We got three special sponsors tonight. We got Tracker coming back again, keeping up with all your goodies. Me Undies, taking care of your goodies. And MVMT <laughs> Watches, which, uh, which we all love and adore. So we're going to talk more about them later on in the show in the midpoint sometime. But for now, let's get to it. We got Harley back again. PKN, Harley pimping. Chiz did a thing. I want to talk about the beginning. What is it, yes. Gum Tracker? You, you got an interruption in... Less than, in less than 30 seconds. Ah, That's fuck off. That's Everybody interrupts. I'm the only one who takes shit for it. You can all oh, suck a dick. We're suck a dick. dick. Suck a dick. Get like, like, on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I am. I am. I, there was a time when, like, everyone interrupted everyone. I was the only one that took shit. And then I started, like, backing off completely. Oh, my God. That is classic. Kyle. What were you talking about a little earlier? I was talking about Harley's office. It looks fucking pimp. I want to know more about this office. What's in those cases back there? What kind of memorabilia you got? What uh, if is, is that video game stuff? Is that sci-fi stuff? Do I see a stormtrooper? I want to know what you got back there. That looks like some. Okay. You still haven't done well, the PKA thing. Well, just you asked. First, check out how sick this is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's down to the desk too, bro. Oh. My desk goes up and down, so I'm like, y'all, you know, my back's a little sore. I'm fucking post up, do my emails like this while standing. <laughs> I never thought in my entire life that the one thing I would cherish the most would be my desk. But like, I fucking love this desk. We're allowed, I'm allowed to swear on the show, right? Uh, oh, yeah. no. Did you, you use bad words? words? That's fine. You get one. Everybody gets one. Oh, just no, <laughs> no. races to Jews, right? Uh, no, we're okay with that. Uh, that that's the only okay, race. Cool. <laughs> well, fuck my people. Uh, <laughs> so I value this desk, but I got, uh, I got, and I'm so happy you asked, by the way. Because, I mean, what's the point of spending all this fucking money if no one's ever going to care and see it? <laughs> but, like, oh my God. what I did was I got really hooked on buying these, like, uh, hot toys or sideshow collectible, collectibles. So they're, like... 12 inch figures like highly detailed um you know it's probably like 18 japanese people made this thing right here mm -hmm. and uh I, I ended up buying like a lot of marvel ones i have like all these stormtroopers and shit because i love star wars and uh a couple of the original epic mealtime guys quit and they were getting paid better than the new guys because they had like you know tenure and they were here for a couple years so their salaries increased and so once they left i was like oh shit i guess i'm gonna start collecting action figures <laughs> As you look, do. Look, at this, look at this. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. Oh, oh yeah. What? If I get a little light to the light. <laughs> Did you bring him over because he's your number one favorite of all your figurines? No, I, I think Darth Vader's my favorite, and I didn't bring him here because he takes two hands. He's much bigger. He's the deluxe, bro. He's like 14 inches, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, I know exactly about 14 inches. Tell me about it. Ah, uh, you know it's heavy and uh, it takes uh, more effort than <laughs> than seven inches does. But I was uh, say, I'm Jewish. We don't know anything about fourteen inches. We know about six <laughs> inches now, six inches later. If you want it, if you want it. <laughs> I was telling Jackie the other day. I stole it from good. the internet. But uh, if you want faster, I can do faster. If you want harder, I can do harder. If you want deeper, bitch, you better be talking about philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we want to yes, take the, hang on, on hang on a minute. I want to tell everybody about Gum Road again. We mentioned them last week. Uh, we're, we we had season one of PKN. As you know, we we came up with this idea to put all the PKNs together in one giant block, the survival trip, and all all of that footage all together, um, so that the people who were you know patrons, the, I, I think we wanted to make sure that everybody felt like they were getting a good deal. So we've got it over there. Um, it's called Gum Road, right? Right, right, Chiz. Chiz, what's the URL? He's tight. Gumroad.com slash PKN. Yeah, gumroad.com slash PK. You can find uh, episode one or season one of PKN over there. And I think for one more week, it's 10% off, right? Yeah. So season one is the coupon code. It lasts for another week. It's 10% off. And the season is like 80 episodes. So it's more than a year. It's a lot of content. So 80 plus hours of content. And, oh, it's 80 hours of just of PKNs. And then what is it? 12 hours of survival uh, footage, I guess. Something like that. Like, yeah. And how much is this? The shitload of content. Steel? It's like $27 for all of it combined. So pretty cheap. Um, wow. And there'll be a link in the description. So check on that if you'd like to if you'd like to see all those PKNs you've been missing. Yeah. I know Harley will with all that figurine money. He'll go buy a couple copies. <laughs> <laughs> Harley, my son's been getting into Epic Mealtime. My wife is like, is this okay? 
And I'm like, yeah, they drink, but it's it's mostly okay. Yeah, you know, kids. I hadn't. It's uh, not beer. Yeah. In the last, uh, like, I hadn't had a drink in about 14 months. Um, I haven't uh, smoked anything. I don't smoke uh, for months. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really go out much. And so it kind of reflects a little on Epic Meal Time. Epic Meal Time's like almost less of the sauce boss character. And even during the eating segments, we're actually eating the meal and talking about it. Really different from the cheeseburger bayonet random girls on the streets episode of the old <laughs> day, You know what I mean, buddy? Those girls weren't <laughs> random that I saw. They were uh, hand-picked. They were random. <laughs> <laughs> like Walmart. Those were very <laughs> random girls. You know what I noticed? Only in the States do girls get, like, picked up at Walmart. Like, that doesn't happen in Canada. And, like, I've seen videos. I was there live, and we did it. Like, I just girls getting picked up at Walmart is just insane to me. But, like... I see, like, there's, like, a culture to it. I see, like, videos and shit, and they're like, yo, we're going to Walmart, going to get some girls, and I don't know. All right, so the way that went down is we found the waitress at the bar. We found the waitress at the bar, and then we had to go to Walmart to get, like, epic mealtime supplies, and so the waitress meets us at the Walmart with her friend in tow. And yeah. in that way, I picked up a girl at a Walmart. Yeah, and yeah, she was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. No, that was yours. That was yours. First of all, none of them are mine. <laughs> that was the one you were spending the most time. As far as I'm concerned, I saw them there and we left them there. And oh, was... oh, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, did you guys follow up? How's the path to being it an attorney going? It doesn't matter. <laughs> We've already said too much. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is now Epic Meal Time is for the children. Your son will only be smarter the more he watches it. That also, tell him to watch my vlogs. <laughs> and you know what? Since also since I I've been putting in the effort, also I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tone down the swearing a little bit too. You know, this would be a little exercise for me. Ah, oh, well. just a mess though. I've been Hold watching. I saw some of your vlogs. You buy figurines in them. <laughs> All right, it's getting it out of my system. Good, good. You guys didn't hear that, right? No, nope. no, no, Not no, no. Would have let you know. You wouldn't be on the call if we could have heard that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're very strict. We drop people quick. Highbrow. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, that's real time highbrow now. It's very highbrow. Where's the place in Canada where you'd go to hit on some girls that here we wouldn't even think about it? Like a Tim Hortons, maybe? Maybe that's because yeah, we, we don't have that. Uh, the ski hill, the hockey rink. Um, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Well, the, the other words were joke. This isn't a joke. You could pick up girls at Igloo Fest if you wanted in Montreal. It's like Igloo. a party where people take... Lots of party favors and go dancing like overnight outside in the snow. So it's like a really cold. Whole... You could pick up girls at Igloo Fest in Canada is just a funny thing to say in itself. Well, you need uh, igloos to protect yourself from the flying hockey. What kind bucks. of party favors are we talking about? It sounds like a great time to me. It sounds like a yeah, Burning I, Man with I, bad weather. I went. Better weather. Uh, Fuck that desert. A, a couple years ago at my peak of just being uh, a mess, <laughs> I uh, went to Igloo Fest with one of the guys and like. I don't know what happened, but someone was like, yo, drink this. And I was like, Rah. and like, Ooh. and I remember like, literally, I'm not even joking. I woke up, I had an office, like in an office space. Now we operate out of my house, but like I had an office space, like with a storefront and everything. And like, we kept our merch in the back. We had our editing bay and everything in the front and like a little filming set. And uh, I woke up one night, well, in the morning, like after Igloo Fest, butt naked. And I literally had this moment, like, I woke up butt naked, and I was like, hello? Hello? Like, when did I get here? How did I get here? I didn't have a car. Uh, I'm naked. And the front door was, like, banging in the wind, like, open. Like, people were there and left. There was a mess. And I was like, what happened? So you're happened? sitting there like, in the middle of the room, text. and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, I am drug. <laughs> <laughs> The first thing I did, which like is something that I almost always do after like a night of getting messed up, I'll like take out my phone. I'm like, oh my god, what's on Twitter? What's on Twitter? Who did I text? What's on my <laughs> Facebook page? Did I upload oh. it to YouTube? Oh, this, this that, is all that coming, panic attack. Is this coming back to you a little bit right now, Taylor? It, it every day. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, you've been there. Oh, I've been there on this show. Yeah, just made a drunk <laughs> ass of myself at one point, and it's just ugh, it's awful, dude. But I, I know that. I know that feeling of waking up. And just that panic, you know, of that night where you wake up and there's a pit of your stomach. You're like, oh, all right, I got all my wallet, phone, keys. 
oh shit, what have I done? What have I said? <laughs> who's who's yeah. seen me? Like, <laughs> then oh. you have to just go through so and kind I've of like been, <laughs> I've been in like every episode of this for a long time running now. Uh, we haven't missed a show in a really long, long fucking time. Patreon, Patreon is why. Yeah, check them out down below. Very long but um, that show, my internet crapped out. I was at my at my ex girlfriend's house, and it was the show the, the night when you got got very drunk and uh, went after Lefty a bit. And <sighs> so that is the only show in any kind of recent memory in like two or three years that I can actually go back to and watch that doesn't include me because I don't want to watch me. Like I, I, I don't like it. Um, so so I really like going back and watching that one because you know it's it's, you're it's not in it. I'm not in it, and you are. Great. And most of what you're saying is true. Like 99.8% of it. I wouldn't know. <laughs> the I core know. theme of what he said was, Lefty, you are neither funny enough nor talented enough to be in the position you are in in PKA. It should be mine. That was, that was <laughs> essentially what he was telling him. Yeah, Taylor was on as, as a guest that night. How did it get to there? He got wasted as fuck. So <laughs> drunk. But so how did it segue? Was it a second? I didn't see it. Was he just like, whoa, 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 whoa. He, had the, he, he must have had that in him already. Yeah, he, he did. He That's it. It, it. it. You know, some people get drunk and say things they don't mean, but Taylor totally said shit that he meant at his core, and he'll I, deny it, but fuck off. We all know it's true. You, the lefty would say, like, nothing bad at all. He'd be like, <laughs> no, well, I think, and Taylor would be like, shut up. You are not funny. Get the fuck yeah. off. <laughs> That's because I, I was being an ass. I was being a total asshole to him, and every time it's been brought up, I've admitted it. I apologized to him because I felt like the biggest piece of shit after I watched as much of that as I could, and I was like, "Oh, oh, you look like the biggest asshole. Like you're that guy." I, now that guy is. You. I think most of us understand that that, that that's not you. That like, yeah, we I, are. I so we all we all have those feelings on the inside that are the shitty oh side of God. us. Ever the envious, uh, asshole, angry, mm -hmm. rageful side of us. It's like fuck you for being you or whatever you're doing, and you know. But we don't voice that because we because our morals, you know, get between us. I think about that, that when I see a out. lip ring. I think that it was just my drunk brain. <laughs> going down a rabbit hole because it lost something to say. I'd never even thought about, like, fucking Lefty before that. <laughs> Not once. I'd never thought of him as a bad guy. I didn't know anything about him. I would have talked to him about hockey if I knew he was a fucking Chicago fan at the well, time. I think subconsciously you, you did, though. I think so, too. It's, that is possible, but I don't... I don't. It, well, that's why I would be subconscious, because I don't think that I... Yeah, do. sometimes you have the thoughts, and, like, they'll come up for a second and be like, no, don't think that. That's horrible. But, but then, you know, when you get to that, that perfect cruise on the buzz, you're like, you know what? That little voice, bring him, bring him back. We're gonna let yeah, him talk tonight. <laughs> it was great. It was, and I feel bad for Lefty too. I don't have any hate in my heart for Lefty anymore. I, uh, but it was funny. Undoubtedly, it was hilarious. funny. Um, I, I, I like shit like that. We should do a drinking episode. Get, get good. Oh. We should play a drinking game. That's what we should do. A drinking game where shots of something tame are involved. I'm down. Like I. I for me, Jägermeister is, is, is kind of like root beer. Like, I can just sip it. Like, I enjoy it. Um, so, like, it just tastes I, like a bunch of licorice. I like that. I like licorice. Oh, I, I'm not a licorice. <laughs> like, I, 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 like, so I'd like to do something on the same alcoholic level as, as that. I, I don't like sipping beer all night. I'm, I'm pissing the whole time, and, like, I, I get a weird hangover if I drink too many, and I just don't Dude, like drinking all that beer. Beer? Beer? I, I loved beer. Cut it off like it. 24 when I was 24 years old I like and now I'm 30 I like one night had like five beers and like woke up and like just had this gut and I was like oh my <laughs> god I'm like beer makes you fat yeah and like I had this moment where I'm like you know like looked up the like information of beer the nutritional information I was like this isn't this isn't gonna work anymore you're I'm drinking like, you're bread yeah exactly and I would much rather just eat bread yeah Bread's good yeah. shit. So yeah, yeah. Your beer was the first for get me. Get some go. of those. Get some of those breadsticks. Yeah, that'd be much better. I remember I was trying to drink really clean for a while, so I'd just drink vodka. Yeah. And like, when you hit the wall with that, like, kind of like I did with Jack Daniels, like a year into Epic Meal Time, like, and then I was like, I'm on vodka now. I got, I hit that wall. You can never go back. Like now, like vodka, like a shot of it or anything, I'm just like, oh, this is gross. You want to mean like a drink. wall? You like you were drinking it so much that now even the thought of it grosses you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like two week, two days a weekend, every week. You, you know, know, like like you want to know Friday, what? Saturday. Oh, I hit my vodka wall. Uh, junior prom, fucking like 2002. <laughs> I, uh, I had a slushy machine in this chick's basement that like made it. It was the kind that's like always circulating, like. 
-hmm. like a slush, a slurry of ice and, and colored sugar water. And then you hit a button and it like, and like you get a thing of it. And I dumped two bottles of Mr. Boston in that shit. And it tasted like candy. And I sat there and drank and drank. And oh, my God. It's no way to know how much alcohol I ingested. But I just remember like too much. Yeah, I, I, I was vomiting all night. And the funny thing is, like, the, the, the girl whose house we were at, like, much later in life, like, as an adult playing poker, uh, to, uh, you know, playing, like, poker in, like, a shady cash game, I see her dad. And her dad's like, hey, I remember you. You was that little fella who was sick on the bathroom floor all night. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, sir. I want to thank, thank you for bringing me those uh, salty crackers and that water. And uh, I didn't. And those memories. Thank you. When you weren't looking to like wash my vomity mouth just to pretend like that didn't happen. And yeah, that was a, that was awful. So I, I, I ruined vodka for myself as a fucking teenager. But uh, I, I really like tequila and I really like uh, uh, Jaeger if I'm going to drink something. Um, but not beer anymore. I'd rather not do beer. But I'm down to do some sort of drinking game, drinking episode, drinking anything. Well, we'd have to agree on something uniform to drink. Because it, otherwise, and it can't just be like a, a Kyle decides on something, and then I'm like, oh, this is something similar. It's got to be brand. the same. Down to the brand the same. name and the bottle size. And we got to shoe nice it. We got to go crack, crack, crack right there. Yeah, and then go keep the it in frame. Got to keep it in frame and pay the rent. Uh-huh. Like, and do it like that. <laughs> Whatever. Carly, do you have a shoe nice story? Like, like, didn't you have some interaction with him? Yeah. So I, uh, early on, I remember like, you know, you, you get this audience and you're like, you're not sure what to do with it, you know, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this Epic Mealtime brand. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll make a team of people that, you know, have channels that are up and coming and we'll pair up together and figure something out. And so I saw shoe nice early. I was watching like his first videos. I'm like, this guy's insane. You know, I was sending it to people when he had like 10,000 views, and uh, and I ended up getting his phone number. <clears throat> and if you think that guy's crazy in his videos, <laughs> let me just say he's well behaved there. We've corresponded on Twitter quite a bit. He and I. What what, what he, did he do? At or least that's from time. I called him, and I was like, uh, "Hey, shoe nice. My name's Harley. I have." Uh, uh, this show, Epic Meal Time, and like it's really loud where he is, and he was just like, "What?" He's like, "What? Do you, who is it?" And I'm like, "It's uh, Harley from Epic Meal Time," and uh, you know, I just wanted to talk, and he was like, "Listen to me," and then he hung up. And I was like, "Okay," and I chilled, and then ten minutes later, my phone rang, and it was him, and I was like, "Hello." Now it's completely quiet. And uh, his <laughs> demeanor was entirely different. Where he was like, "What? Who is this?" Now he's like, "Yo, what up?" And I was like, "Hello." He's like, "Shoe nice." And I'm just like, "Oh, okay." Did he just go gangster on me? What happened? Like, where is he now? It's like quiet. It's weird. Uh, and I'm like, "Hey, man, I uh, was just calling because I thought, uh, you know, what you're doing and like what we're doing, maybe there's some sort of uh, bigger." Uh, collaborative thing we could do maybe we can meet up and discuss a few th and he literally this it sounded like this woman came in the room and started yelling at him <laughs> and then he started yelling at her and now i'm listening and like i let <laughs> this woman and the woman yell at him and i just literally have spoken to this guy for 45 seconds and and now all i'm thinking is like man this is the show whatever's going on with him right now that's the show the eating of the tampons, that's just the icing on the cake. Whatever's going on now, like, that's the real deal. And uh, called him a couple other times and literally every time was, like, a, such a wild card conversation that they never lasted more than 20 seconds until he just hung up on me and his phone <laughs> would be dead or he wouldn't answer after that. And then he didn't talk for, like, two months. Didn't, didn't, I couldn't call his number. It was a different number. He didn't call me, whatever. And then, like, he just went on Twitter and just started talking smack out of nowhere once. I'm like, what's going on here? I remember that. He's on just you? insulting me. And yeah. like I said earlier to you guys before, you, you know, we started recording, like, I have this habit of just being like, what? This bitch wants to go in? I'm ready right now. And so, like, I started, like, going in on him. And then it got, like, weird. He was like, I'm going to fight you. And then he's, like, started uploading videos of him training to fight <laughs> Wait, and when he was, the hell like, doing was this? Push-ups and hitting the punching bag. Like but four years was, ago. Like, really old and drunk. And so I was looking at him, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like tripping. I'm like, 
who the shoe nice dies training to fight me for a fight that would never happen. And then I'm like, tripping out. I'm like what if I killed shoe nice by like somehow calling him to work together and he took it as fighting words in some messed up world that he's living in. And he like started insulting me when me insulting him back on Twitter, he started training to fight me. What if he has a heart attack? The guy's eating a thousand tampon cigarettes and drugs, like full bottles. I'm like, but I'm going to be the one that kills him. And I'm, I'm like tripping out. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, now when people talk smack to me on the internet. Did everyone else lose him? Did he get, yeah. You got, oh, you went, lost oh your we lost your audio. Like, you went quiet. Harley, did you know what happened? He did that intentionally, I think. He looks like he's trying it. to figure it out. The last thing we heard was now when people talk smack to me on the internet and then it just... Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yep. You hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now when people talk smack to me on the internet, I'm not like, oh, F your mom or anything like that. Now I'm like, I guess because I'm 30, I'm like, hey, hey, buddy, what's this really about? <laughs> Can I help you? Like, is there something going on? Do you need do you need the sauce bosses? You're help? trying to be Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. It's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, not I don't. Fault. I'm not like I'm not. You know, I'm not going to go in and like uh, insult you. I don't think I've ever gone in in an insult match with a random on the internet and lost. But I always lose a piece of myself because I say really mean shit to them. I'm like, uh, you know, I'll like I'll go deep. I'll like pull up a picture of their girlfriend. I'll be like, oh what? I'll be like, that's your girl. I'm gonna cuck you, you beta. <laughs> <laughs> And then after, I'm just like, I shouldn't have said that. The guy, he's not, he's insulting me because he's not doing anything with his life. Why would I go and insult that? Instead, I'm just like, hey, man, what's going on? You want a job? Is that what this is? You want me to give you a job? And that's all. I was trying to, like, take that higher road, but I still end up coming off condescending yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, but... yeah, the high road of condescendingly offering them a job. Yeah. <laughs> the, the whole, like, I'm better than you. I yeah. have this to offer, but I in know. my... In my power, I will withhold. Like, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, hey, let's let's go let's go look look at ourselves in the mirror and figure out who we are, yeah. right? Should Got a couple that? of links on Monster for you. Hope this helps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> senior dishwasher. Yeah. yeah. Go to his LinkedIn profile and rewrite some of his stuff. Here, it looks better this way. Here, you, yeah, <laughs> just, you give him like a helpful resume. Yeah. yeah. Get to the yeah, I condensed it for you, and I took that old stuff out of there. They don't, they're not looking for that anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the Flyers just the tied their game. The, professionalism, you know, the Flyers the tied up? Yeah. That's big news, man. I, I'm sorry. The before the game started, we were oh, watching God. it. The Flyers I'm were so down. Pumped. Stop, Kyle. Give me a sec. <laughs> the Flyers were down 3 1. I thought it would be interesting because the game is actively happening as we record <laughs> this. You guys, I guess, know the score. But um, the Flyers have been trying to lose their way into the playoffs. Like they, They're on a two game losing streak. But fortunately, everyone else that they're competing with for the spot is also losing. And uh, it looks like they're trying something new. They're scoring goals and not nice. giving up goals. Yeah. And Boston, Detroit, and Philly are, were all, like, four days ago, desperate. And everybody was like, they got to fight to win. All of them are going to be doing, like, so hard, just fucking fighting for those goals to win, make it to the playoffs. All of them have lost every game since. <laughs> They're, they've, or no, no, because they, one of them played each other, so they had to win at one point. But good lord. Yeah, I thought Philly was going to make it, but they're not looking too good anymore. Well, they are looking better now. Um, better now, yeah. yeah Blues it, are playing Chicago right now. If, Still there's, tied up. there's one minute left in the game, as I say this, and it's tied. So they're probably going to get a point out of this, maybe two. And uh, what's Detroit doing? Did, did they lose to Boston? Let's see. Uh, oh, I always feel bad. Three one end of second. Bad being the uh, the only Canadian and also the least interested in hockey. No, I, I think Kyle happened. might have it's you for so, least interested. It's so disappointing to me when I found out you were Canadian and it was like the first time that you were going to be on the show, and I'm like, fucking finally, he's from Canada. He has to at least give have a cursory knowledge and kind of care. And then I bring it up the first time, like wanting to have a conversation about like past cups, and you're like, nah. Now I'm yeah. Star Wars figurines, bro. <laughs> 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 like a sick Boba Fett, Series 1. No, it, I, they got their point. I think, I think the, the last time I watched overtime. a hockey game on TV, they had that yellow overlay on the puck, and it was fucked. That was like 1997. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah so it's been it's a hot second. Like one year, and then they were like, that's a bad idea. Yeah, but I mean, before HDTVs, 
it was fucking hard to watch hockey on TV. True. On those, like, boob tube screens where you, like, put your hand on it, you feel that fuzzy static. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't oh, I missed see the that. Puck at all. Kids today will never get that, you know? that They'll never feel that staticky screen, screen and, and wonder at the energy that's being beamed into yeah. them constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they'll also never walk in on their siblings like the tearing the VHS tape out. They're like, wow, I can literally feel the radiation coming off this thing I sit three feet from all day, every day. Hmm, yeah. couldn't be a problem. And now we have cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, these are, these are nothing. All right, so these are, aren't, it's such a minuscule amount of radiation. The, the, the cell phone my dad had when I was a kid was one of those that was in like a pouch, and it was like Velcro. And it, yeah, bag phone. You had a uranium was, battery. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was a big brick fucking god knows what powering it battery, like radium or some shit. It glowed <laughs> in the dark, and it, it was also plugged into the cigarette lighter continuously. Like you couldn't, you couldn't unplug it. I don't think. Like it needed that much power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it needed like your your twelve volt and a huge booster battery that was probably top of the line for the day and could have power. It was probably in the our spy satellites or something. That was like. Back in the car phone days. That's what it was, like yeah. The car phone. And my yep. dad was pretty pimp for having one at the time. I Mine remember, too. like, nobody dad else's dad had one. My dad, my da we would my be dad had one, too. It, it was, was so, like a, it was like a magic power. Like, we'd be somewhere, and somebody would be like, oh, I need to call. I, I, I got to get home. I got to find out about this. Or somebody would need to make a call. And dad's you got like, a quarter. Shh. dad's like, like no. Shh. I got that I shit got right here. Phone. Like they're like, what do you mean? Is that a CB radio? No, it calls motherfuckers. <laughs> like, not okay, my so dad. So all of our dads had car phones. Woody, you probably were someone who had a car phone and you thought it was like the shit when you first got it, right? Uh, so my father had the car phone. I was like fifteen or thirteen or something like that when he first got it, and. Unlike Kyle's dad, there was no like showing it to friends or whatever. It was like this is dad's phone. It apparently costs like fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars a minute to use this fucking thing. <laughs> he would call on the way home from work and be like, "Honey, yep, eighteen minutes away. Uh, you know, dinner on the table." She's like, "Roger," and then hang up. And those were like the only calls he made on that phone. I remember it was it was. It, I think he paid like a, a flat dollar amount and got like X amount of minutes, but you know it was like a hundred minutes or something or, or something like that for the month. And you're right, you didn't you didn't do a whole long drawn out thing. But if he needed to place an order for something or if he needed to like make a call and check on a, an auto part or whatever the fuck, you know, I mean the things we use cell phones now nowadays instead of driving back home or looking for a payphone. And we're in a rural area here; there aren't many payphones. Mm. Um, it was just like magic, and it still is. These are. The cell, f the, the smartphone is the is the greatest invention ever, right? Like, does anything trump the smartphone? I was thinking about that. It, it, oh, let's the, think. The smartphone is amazing. As smart as any man has ever been. This th this makes me as smart as any. Th this is but the not really human knowledge. Yes, really. That's, well, that's like a double edged sword, though. Practically speaking, it does. If I need to do a thing, then I'll get the knowledge right. I could I could find out how to build a nuclear weapon with this. I could find out how to repair my engine with this. I could rewire my house. I could build a house. I could I could build See, a. Paper it, build. It's hard to figure out where the smartphone starts and where the internet ends, right? Like I was thinking to myself, like, what's the bigger deal, the smartphone or the internet? I guess it'd have to be the internet. The smartphone yeah, is just a internet. bullshit Palm Pilot, you know. That's that, just that, the medium. It's your it's calendar. A, yeah, that's like saying access. computer monitors are amazing. Computer monitors do these great things. It, I disagree. It, go on. I disagree. I feel like this is your all-in-one shop. This does every fucking thing. This does a whole Radio Shack cat, uh, catalog full of shit, all in one little package. It's that's only interesting because it. it's connected to the internet. I disagree. I, I think it would be interesting if it just contacted any human being on the planet at will. That's pretty fucking cool to me. And being able to send them a, a text message at the fucking speed of light. Like, that, that shit's cool to me. Well, you know, roughly. But the, the, the fact that it accesses the internet is just one better thing. The internet is incredible, and you're right. It's, 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 it's what makes it possible to do the thing. So you've got a good point, but I feel like the smartphone is what lets every man do if it. Like, like the guy internet, in India can get on the internet. If you take the internet away from the smartphone, it's still like the best, most advanced portable music player. It's like the best camera for its size. Uh, if you download movies onto it or just put them on with like not including the internet, you know, or apps that don't have to run on the internet, it's like an amazing little computer. It's like 10 things in one. Um, but it just goes hand in hand with the internet. It I does. feel like- I only stream the music internet, internet doesn't count. Internet is like, that's not, that's not fair. The internet is too much. I feel like we haven't even tapped into what the internet could be still. You know what I mean? Right. Like the internet, I remember when, when the internet was new, 
it was like, ooh, is this bigger than the printing press? Could it possibly be? And I was like, wow, this really might compare with the printing press. This is a way for like the everyman <laughs> to to like get his message out to the whole world. And that's no joke, right? Like Taylor, you're unmuted or something. Um, but um, uh, the printing press changed the way that knowledge gets out because suddenly like ordinary people could afford books and you know or semi ordinary people could put, you know have their word duplicated and sent out the internet took that and multiplied it by 100 but the internet in your pocket does a whole nother thing suddenly it's the way i consume most of my entertainment it's the way that i, I listen to music it's the way i find my way around it's the way i answer the, all my questions the number one thing that i i th the most powerful thing it does is empower me it makes me be able to do anything virtually that i mean i mean all right i can't i can't pole vault you know over over a building i can't do anything but anything that that any normal man with my same uh, qualities can do uh like, like if i need to work on my car i do it a lot with my car anytime i got to do something that i've never done before i watch a quick eight minute video and all of a sudden i have the knowledge of this literal expert i just watch an expert do it and he'll have little he'll be like you might want a long you may want a long screwdriver for this it'll make the job easier and you're like yeah he learned that because he did it 15 fucking times and he learned a long screwdriver is the trick that's, that's it you're if you go back to 1989 with your smartphone connected to today's internet you're the smartest man in the world yeah oh and yeah. you know what another thing and this is like you know something like i remember being in high school and like fighting my friends like we're all in four of us in an argument and it's something dumb like a Nissan Altima is $25,000. It's like, no, my dad used to have one. It's $32,000, idiot. And it's like, no, and like we'd argue over like the price of a Nissan Altima in high school because you're just, and it was just such a dumb uh, thing. Kids. And even now I think about it, I'm like, why didn't any of us, <laughs> I'm like, why didn't any of us walk to the library, which is right in school and get on the computer and Google. But when I was younger and I knew of the internet, the last thing I ever did was Google something or search something. I never thought to be like, you know, when I was like, first started going to the gym and working out, I never thought to be like, what are good workouts for my shoulders? I never thought like that. Now in a second, I'm so dependent on the phone, I'll take it out all the time. Kids are also like, I'll watch like, kids will do things like, you know, younger kids like at the gym, for example, they're gonna be so much bigger and in better shape because they're better informed. Like they have all this information at like the palm of their hands and people like, you know, they give a lot of, people give a lot of slack to like flack to younger kids these days. So like, oh, they're always addicted to their phones. And they're like, yeah, they're learning shit. They're actually, a lot of times they're learning shit. They, they type like idiots and they waste a lot of time on Instagram. But like, I see kids like when they're dedicated to something like, for example, like nutrition, eating better. Like they're just so much more informed because you don't have to go to a library and take out a book. You just pull out your phone and you're like, boop, 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 and you have the answers right away, you know? And uh, I don't know. That's, that's the thing about the phones that's interesting is like educationally, it actually inspires people to just, you know, take control of their information and gather more information. People like learning. I notice that these days. Yeah. I think that started with writing, you know, as soon as we figured out writing and you were able to pass down your, uh, your knowledge to, to people who, you know, your, your descendants, and it wasn't just word of mouth anymore, because, you know, we know how that goes. I could tell you a story and you could tell Woody the story and it won't be the same fucking story. So it's going to be hard for me to tell my ancestors how to be carpenters. Do you think but as soon as we figured like, out writing, it, I think it helped us evolve. Do you think that just like people... When the internet was just coming around, there are people like this will be done, like you know, or or that uh, internet CEO who was like, "TV's coming back, you know, online streaming, a way of the past, like totally blinders on to the future." Like, I wonder if the first guy to be like, "Dude, if I take two X's like this, and I know that means there's a monster coming to get our wives, and you know that, then if I write that down on a cave, we know not to stay in that cave." Like, were there a bunch of naysayers like, oh, Jesus, newfangled signs and, and scratches on walls. We can't handle We already are hooting at each other. That's not good <laughs> enough. Like, that, there, there's probably always someone, always someone standing in the way of progress, even back then. I don't know why I thought about that. Sorry. I think I just, I read something on Reddit this week that there's only been, like, a handful of written languages ever. Um, I think it's like. Uh, that, that can't be true, can it? Yes. There's I, a ton now. Well, right. I, uh, original systems, alphabets. Oh, yeah, like a bunch of languages share the same alphabet. So yeah. Oh. No. Uh, yeah. I've got a topic. Go ahead. 
Sure. Did you guys hear about uh, Marco and his partner getting sued? Losing. Not they didn't get sued for. They awarded them. They awarded the other guys twenty million dollars in damages. Who's Marco? What? You know Educate Marco. Educate me. All right. So, so here, let me. Uh, I'm going to try and read this uh, fairly quickly. It's pretty long. Um, on Friday, April first, another dispute regarding channel ownerships and rights reached a sizable verdict: twenty million in damages awarded to the plaintiffs, as well as controlling interest in the YouTube channel Video Games. Uh, the case was filed in 2014 by David Tyler Moss, known as Ty Moss, and former Maker Studios shareholder Brandon Keating against YouTubers Marco Precip and Brian Martin. Kyle, I know you know Marco. He, I think he has B.O. Oh, is that the guy who smells? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's amazing how we are as humans, right? I've, like, I, I, you I, see I, someone pick their nose once and nothing else matters. You might get the guy that picks We have nose. never yeah, revealed... <laughs> Yeah. The, we have never actually revealed who the smelly person <laughs> was on that trip, so I, I, I okay, if, if you say that was Marco, um, but uh, but I, I just felt like it was mean to, to label him as the smelly guy. Well, It is mean to label someone as the smelly guy. Maybe he no longer smells. That was years ago. Anyway, um, this thing goes into it. Apparently, like, he's... According to this article on thevideolink.com, he's been widely regarded as kind of shady. And uh, what he did is he, he promised, like, pieces of this channel to people in exchange for content. And then he just, I'm sorry, in exchange for, like, ownership of the channel or a piece of the channel. And then he never did it. So uh, there's been a bunch of guys, like, who were also in that situation. Like, oh, yeah, that guy ripped me off, too. That guy ripped me off, too, on Twitter going wild about this verdict. And I... I I don't want to get people wrong, but I think was Quibblecop one of them? KSI, Chiz, do you know? Ali A and Quibblecop and KSI. Quibblecop, Quibblecop, were you uh, were you led astray by this man, Quibblecop? <laughs> he tell me he tell me that I, I give him the the content and and then he puts it up on the site and he not tell me that that I make the content and did so you, I give it to him and then he put it up. Did you sign a written contract with him? Was I there... signed the contract. I do everything let, he say. Let me and ask then you I this. Didn't even get when you signed the contract, <laughs> did he give you anything to eat or drink beforehand? I had been, he had given drug. Yes. <laughs> 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 I was starting to lose it. I was to lose it. <laughs> so, from the case yeah. details and evidence, it appears that Marco, that. who's had various YouTube channels <laughs> shut down over the years, including <laughs> Team Noble and Martin, who operates his YouTube channel, Futuristic so Hub, both had a history of deception in the YouTube world. An unfortunate byproduct of measuring the YouTube economy is to offer openings for con men and crooks, as evidenced by this case. Marco and Precip may be anomalies, anomalies to the industry as a whole, but the ruling will undoubtedly cause future independent creators to think twice about deal terms. So, yeah, I, I don't know what happens. I, I'm sure this channel didn't earn $20 million. Uh, it, it's doing pretty well. It has like 3 million subs, but the videos tend to get like Fifty to ninety thousand views a pop, and uh, how many videos a day? Uh, I'd have to check. Well, let me do the this. The name of the channel is just video games. Yeah, that's the the real beauty. They they kind of squatted on an amazing uh, channel name, and uh, the answer is it looks like maybe three or four videos a week. Okay, that. It's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like... the most profitable YouTube channel of all time. <laughs> He's and making I mean, almost a video. Not yeah, one, two, three. So they did five videos in the last week, and it's averaging 100,000-ish views, maybe a little less. And, uh, um, you know, so it, it's, you can make a living off it. But $20 million, you, it's not earning that. It probably hasn't earned that in its whole life. It, it's probably 20 years from making that. And it said the uh, the evidence showed that video games YouTube had 813 million clicks and was paid $3 per 1,000 clicks or $2.5 million for the advertising on the site, plus more than $1.5 million in future earnings, and $16 million in punitive damages. Whoa. Oh, guys, oh. your country. Your cunt, that doesn't happen here. In my <laughs> country, there's a problem. There's no, there's no, and, and $16 million for hurting my feelings. <laughs> well, that was for the That's stealing. That's so much it, right? money. It's not just for that. It's to let anybody Jeez. else that might want to hurt some feelings know they better not fuck around. Jeez, you got yeah. fucked out of ownership too? 
He's writing it. She's just like fact checking and stuff. He started gonna... the channel with Marco. Ch cheers, cheers. You better get a mill out of there. Start it, a bro. class action, class action. Get the civil suit rolling. Come on. Wait, Chiz, did you really start <laughs> video games channel? Yep. He said yep. Well then, yeah. what are you? How do you? How are you not in on that? <laughs> you get the like, off why are you in court? Why are you in a courtroom somewhere? With a lawyer. Yeah. Speak to an attorney right now. <laughs> yeah. Cliff, talk to him. You're a video game attorney. No, 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 no. I'm completely out of my jurisdiction. <laughs> this, completely is, out of my this is right up your alley, Cliff. This is not in my wheelhouse. I specialize in video game release dates and policy there. This is bullshit. It. Such specific video game law. What a goddamn shame. He's really a release date practice. specialist. Yeah. <laughs> I mostly specialize in bird law. I'm sorry. It really, <laughs> really, really cuffed here. Um, what do you do? But yeah, like I, I feel like it seems like there's a lot of people on YouTube who were like, right, they promised me a piece of this. They promised that. Of it. And it hits right here with Chiz at Quibble Cop, Ali A, uh, KSI. Like everyone seems to be celebrating this loss that they had. Uh, Marco and, and whoever, Futuristic Hub, don't seem to have, they seem to have a lot more people who feel wronged in their wake than, than friends. I don't know. This, is, had... uh, this is interesting. It says the case took an additional twist after the verdict when the judge ordered Martin and his lawyers to appear in court Tuesday to explain a Twitter message Martin allegedly sent out Friday night after the verdict, inviting video game, video game directors to upload, upload pornography to the YouTube channel. So I guess he was just like, let's bring the whole channel down. <laughs> wow. <sighs> wow, why do that? Like YouTube's gonna be like, oh, it's not salvageable, fuck. Yeah, yeah right? No <laughs> YouTube.com yeah. slash video games, gone forever. No. Ah, rats! Should have seen this coming. Like, <laughs> that's that's nonsense. Well, it seems like he's a real asshole, and that he's getting what's coming. But it also seems like he's getting maybe a little more to yeah, what's I, coming, unless I'm misunderstanding what he fully did. I wonder. That's a lot of fucking money. Is this one of those like McDonald's lawsuits where like they award twenty million and then on appeal they knock it down to like six hundred thousand? That McDonald's did one, that happen? It, it's like with the hot at, coffee. At this, the Mc, the hot coffee McDonald's at this point, it's almost a trope that somebody has to explain that it wasn't ridiculous when someone brings it up but if you actually look that case up it wasn't ridiculous they no, gave her a cup of I know this case. boiling water boiling. like if you look at her if you look at her like where the china yeah here, where even, she was burned, even before that so severe even before the boiling this is i actually read it and this is the internal communication that i read from like this book like you know just a reference book brought up the story internal communication within mcdonald's ended up screwing them over in this case because what happened was McDonald's noticed, and these numbers are going to be a little off, but you get the point of what I'm saying anyways. McDonald's noticed that the average time someone spends in a McDonald's is 15 minutes. So you go in, you order your food, you eat, and you're done and paid and everything within 15 minutes of getting your food. So what they did was they would heat their coffee up and they said their coffee is free refills. You get free refills of coffee at McDonald's. But they heated their coffee up to like 106 degrees Celsius, like above boiling, so that when you got it, it took 18 minutes for it to be drinkable. So you would never refill your coffee. Your coffee is only good to drink after you've left McDonald's for about three minutes based on the average time. That's now, that's great. their internal communication. That was their strategy for their free refills, not having to pay for coffee because they're going to make it so hot people can't drink it while they're there. This old woman comes in. She gets her coffee. She spills it on her legs. Her legs are demolished. You could look at her legs. They're horrible and scary. Bad. And her crotch. She said – she asked for McDonald's. She said – and the numbers might be off again. She was like, I need $60,000 for my medical bills. And McDonald's were like, was like, yeah, well, you're going to get 15 and that's all we're doing for you. And apparently she's not like a poor woman. Um, and she said that she was like, OK, well, I just want the 60,000 for my legs. And they were like, yeah, well, you're only getting 15,000. Coffee's hot, bitch. I thought you knew. <laughs> and then she came in hard with team of lawyers. They they found like all the, the emails internally came out. And that's what helped the ruling. Where it was like, oh, you were just trying to be disgusting and make a huge profit and do your free refills and sneaky, sneak your customers. But at the same time, you made it really dangerous for anyone that came in. Like your coffee's not just hot. Your coffee is so hot people can't drink it. 
so that you could advertise free refills. And so that was basically how it ended up biting them in the ass. And wow. it's also because of greed. Like they could have just like it's I sometimes wonder when someone's like, I need sixty thousand dollars, I'm like, you're McDonald's. Why won't yeah. you give sixty thousand dollars? Like, what's fifteen thousand dollars to sixteen thousand dollars when you're McDonald's? It's like an accounting error or rounding up your accounting. Yeah, it's de minimis. Yeah, I bet they, they would they, do that right now that this story never existed. Yeah. Like, yeah. why wouldn't you just do it to try and nip it in the butt? Harley, I've yeah. heard this story a hundred times. That was the best explanation I've ever heard in my life. Right there, bro. I used to be a teacher, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was great. That was really, really great. I took your you. class. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I should be the best at telling the McDonald's stories, though. Yeah, like, that's yeah, just there a lot. Oh. my brand and how much, like, I'm, I'm wearing... <laughs> no. Hey, did, sure did the Burger King have, have like six eggs and or anything? Like, <laughs> McDonald's face. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I should. <laughs> You're one of their <laughs> biggest clients. McDonald's inspired shirt right now. So. Do you have any dirt on any of the other franchises? Did did like mm. did, like Dave Thomas keep sex slaves in the basement? Did <laughs> the Wendy's a bitch. fucking Filipino? I do have a funny story. I, I worked with Wendy's recently, and uh, when I went to uh, uh, to like Wendy's headquarters. They were like, yeah, we were going to work with you guys earlier, but you used to have this blog up and like you called Wendy your little slut in the blog. <laughs> and like, you know, we kind of were hesitant at first. I'm like, oh, yeah, I have a blog. I'm like, I didn't even know that. I'll delete it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, side note, Wendy's in Canada is like one of the best fast foods in Canada. Dude, like, I tried it doesn't to taste quite the same in the States, but yeah, in Canada, it's. I looked into buying a Wendy's. The uh, the Wendy's in my I, li I used to live in Apex, and uh, they were selling the Wendy's, and it was a successful store. Like just by foot traffic and stuff, I was like, "Oh, this thing's doing well." Three million dollars for that Wendy's. I, Jesus I, Christ! Yeah, and you know how much a Chick Fil A is? Four hundred grand. But you have to run through their whole rigmarole of qualifications and whatnot. Like that's you're also not Chick -fil -A open on is. Sundays. Yeah, Chick have you ever seen a Chick Fil A that's not packed when it's open? I don't know it's why. never just a slow run through Chick Fil A. They've got like smiling Mormon looking fucks, that's like way so out past that ordering. I thing. love that hate chicken. That hate chicken is. <laughs> they make chicken into a sweet somehow. Like it's it's like lightly breaded and crispy, but the meat is still juicy and delicious and sweet somehow. It's peanut peanut so I don't good. like pickles like on my that. sandwiches or burgers or anything, but Chick Fil A, I keep that pickle in. Like, yeah. it's important. The pickle in that is important. It's crazy. It's like. Yeah. It's really great. And I remember when they had their whole, like, you know, hate homosexuals thing going on. I was like, God damn. Like, now I can't tweet about it when I go to Chick-fil-A and, <laughs> and enjoy a yeah, burger. I, and at yeah. the end of the day, it's like, it was. it's not all the Chick-fil-A's. It's like the dude who runs Chick-fil-A. That's like me not buying a drill from Home Depot because I heard, like, the manager say gook on the way in. Where I'm actually, like, well, someone's headed to Lowe's. And, so, like, actually, what, what the Chick-fil-A guy was doing with his money was, like, funneling it overseas to uh, one of those African countries <laughs> where he had one of those kill the gays, uh, like, political bills, and he's funding that campaign, a campaign that's literally about punishing gay Kyle, people with death. Kyle, that can't be true. The chicken is too good. That's what I. That's what I. That's what I tell myself every time. Like I still eat that shit. I got several gay friends. I. 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 I, I eat that chicken though, and so do they. So do they. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah, I, I will eat that chicken patty, bathed in the blood of Congolese children. I, I love that shit. It's fucking delicious. I don't care what. I didn't on know that. they did that. Though. If I. That's, if that I like more something. Sense why people were so pissed. Yeah. If I like something, and I find out they hate Jews, but I like their food. Yeah. I'll just go in there and not tell them I'm Jewish so they don't spit in my food. Good call. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. But like, I'll still, that's the thing about people, especially us in like Western culture is like, we're very out of sight, out of mind. So it's like, we can like pick Chick-fil-A apart for like, oh yeah, like, you know, this reason, but it's also a fast food restaurant. There's a billion other reasons to pick it apart. You know, almost every single thing, like we were just praising the iPhone because, you know, or you know what I mean? I'll I'll get flack on Epic Meal Time for it's like, oh my god, such a waste of food. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, you're sitting at your computer. Get your ass up and go volunteer at the soup kitchen. Then you know what I mean? It's like people are very out of sight, out of mind. So it's like if you don't see it, or you don't like feel it, but all you know is that Chick Fil A tastes so good, it's so easy to forget about everything else. You're like, I'm just yeah. gonna enjoy this for three bucks. I like gay people. You know what I mean? I also like this chicken sandwich. 
I remember this is this is sort Thank of connected. Like I was thinking about the anti-Semitism it got to me. I, Howard on the Howard Stern show a while back they did a prank phone call. It's been a while back. They call a McDonald's in Libya, and this is right about the time a lot of shit was going off in Libya. And uh, they were basically asking. They were like, they were like, hey, I'm American. Would it be okay for me to come to your McDonald's and eat? Am I gonna be in any danger? And the guy's like, oh no, oh no, yes, of course you can come. You can eat in our McDonald's. Of course, we're very. We'll get, you'll get good service, absolutely. We don't hate Americans. We hate America. We hate the government of America and what they do. And, he, and, and he's like, oh, well, that's good to know, good to know. What about Jews? And the guy's like, no fucking Jews. No, Jew <laughs> no Jews. No Jews. Absolutely not. He's, he's like, what would, what would happen if a Jew came? Would you, would you cut their head off? We cut their head off and deep fry it. You know, he's, he's <laughs> Losing his shit about the Jews, like like he was he was supposed to have Americans there, like anybody, everybody. I think he asked a couple, about a couple of groups, but when he got to Jews, the guy was like, "Oh," and this is just you know McDonald's worker, like this is him on the phone at McDonald's at work. He's like, "Oh yeah, no Jews." Like he's not even tampering his voice. He's not even like keeping it yes. quiet. The, the guy's hanging like, up and going, "God, another like, call." Flips burgers, like yeah, no Jews. <laughs> <laughs> not again. Uh, where, where where was that? Which one was that? Uh, it's uh, Sal from the Stern Show calls McDonald's in Libya. Okay, Libyan. That's such a good T-shirt, like a uh, like a Libyan McDonald's T-shirt that just says "No Jews." O over <laughs> over one million burgers sold, not to a single Jew. Or something like that. <laughs> not to a single, not a McDonald's single Jew in served here. <laughs> yeah, zero Jews served at this establishment. I was um I I, I as. I want to hear your thoughts on the current po uh, American uh, polit uh, political race, both as a Canadian and as a Jewish man, because that because Israel's place in the whole thing, I think, falls into play a little bit, too. I don't know if you know, are the current candidates, uh, uh, they, they went to that. I don't remember. Chis, what was the thing called with, uh, with all the, uh, the, 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 the Jewish like, super PAC thing that they went and spoke in front of, all the rabbis and stuff? APAC. Yeah, yeah. So I want I want to hear your thoughts on uh, on the current race with Trump and Cruz and Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. So I don't know much about uh, politics, and I remember like about a year ago, Trump announcing it, and like uh, I remember like saying to a buddy of mine who's who, who's like pretty deep in politics, I'm like, hey man, talk to me. Um, can Trump become president? And he was like, no, 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 no. It's like, it's so stupid that he's going to, like, yeah, no, he can't because this, that. And he would never and blah, blah, blah. And then it's like a year later and I'm calling him up and I'm like, dude, what's happening? I'm like, is this real life? Like, will there be like a, a USS Trump, like rocket ship sent into space? Like, is this like, is the future going to be as crazy as it sounds? Like, is it going to be like Trump Nation? He's like, that's where it's going. And I was shocked that like, but I wasn't shocked. Like, I can understand if I if I could be completely stereotypical to Americans for a second, you guys do that shit to Canadians all the time. So Yeah, um, apologize afterwards. I wouldn't be shocked if a majority of people in like the middle of the USA like sit down, they don't know much about politics, would look at Trump and be like, Yeah, he's rich. He's American. I wanna make America great again. I'm voting for him. Bernie Sanders, what is that? Some Jew? No. <laughs> not going to do that. Dude, it's not the Jew. We had a black thing. man run the country. Now we're going to have a Jew? Yeah, right. That, Let's make America he's great a again. Rich man. He, so I, I'm not surprised. You know he, what I mean? I, I'm he's, from like the middle of that country area. And like just from talking to my grandparents about it, it's not. they've never mentioned the Jew thing ever. I don't think they give a shit. And they live in southern Missouri. But yeah, they like rednecks really don't even don't know what Jews like, are. Yeah, they don't care about the Jew thing <laughs> at all. For real, they couldn't care any less. They're like, I'll be like, hey, that that's a Jewish temple, and they'll be like, I don't the, give a fuck. And it's the, like, all right, like. <laughs> only reference. That's I, it. All right, all right. The only reference I had about about Jews at all, like growing up, was my grandmother was very religious, and and she and she had this magnet on her refrigerator that said, "My God is a Jewish carpenter" or something like that. And, uh, and, and, you know, and, and, that, and she was always very pro-Israel. You know, those are God's chosen people, et cetera, et cetera. And she always, she always talked about that a lot. Um, so that was – I never had this idea of the of, no. um, uh, uh, of anti-Semitism at all. They hate all. the socialist part. They hate that. But the Jew part doesn't play into it all, at least from, the, from what they've explained to me, them and their fellow elderly people's opinions. 
Yeah, I, I didn't understand why someone would discriminate against. I was like, but, but why? Like, like, that's like discriminating against gingers or something. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, why? Why, why are you? And then I met Harley, and I, I understood right away. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I see. It's now, I see. final solution. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give me your money. Give me your fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, that's no, true. Like, uh, yeah, obviously Jews have been hated for a long time across history. Why do you think that uh, is? Uh, cause they're fucking greedy. Obviously, it's because <laughs> it, it's because traditionally they've been in the money lending business, and usury, as it as it was known, has has long been sort of a forbidden thing. That you know, I have my own theory. No, this is yeah? this is true. This is a good explanation, <clears throat> Kyle. I know it's it's the it's it's the explanation. Yeah, keep going. It, I'm. Oh, it, it's 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 that they were in the money lending business, and that was a a thing that that was considered low class. It, it was not a thing to do. It it, it was it, you were, they were looked down upon because of that. In yeah. many areas, it was of, seen as shameless. I think. Yeah. And it was during the Roman times where they got assigned that job, right? Where they were like, ah, well, everybody's going to hate this guy. Let's make a Jew do it. Um, I don't know about that, but I, I know that usury. Uh, it, it, I, I've always considered to be the core of it. That and that, you know, it's a tight-knit population that kind of uh, inter keeps the money within that population and often doesn't, uh, you know, in, especially in European countries like Germany. That's where I was headed. Um, oh. Like right now, I, my bank isn't a religion at all. Like, it, it, like my, I don't, my bank doesn't have a religion. Like Wells Fargo, what is it? Christian, Jewish? Mo like, I don't know. It's, it's a company is what it is. And then I Those feel like... Mads up in there. Mad Jews touching your money. Yeah. <laughs> Every day they go in there and they go into your account and they touch all your money. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> just for um, the sake of it, just kind of just. But you I, know that I, smell I that pennies that, have? That's juice spit. I think that what the reality is <laughs> is that Jewish people sometimes don't meld. Like they, they, they culturally, they make it a priority. To, what are you guys Oy doing? They. <laughs> culturally, they make it a priority to like sort of keep it within themselves, right? I, I, growing up, because I, I, I grew up with a lot of Jewish people. I don't think you guys did, but mm -hmm. in, in New Jersey? I did. Okay, I knew you did. a good number of Jewish people. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know how many bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs I've been to, like a bunch. Too many. And, uh, um, but like, if you thought a Jewish girl was cute, she couldn't date you. Like that, that was not on the table in Jersey. Yeah, and, and um, they, they, yeah, you wouldn't date a Gentile. And you certainly, certainly wouldn't marry one. And uh, <laughs> at least in the Northeast, they work hard to keep, you know, the community kind of separate and isolated and keep that alive. They, they're not interested in being melting. They're interested in, you know, more of a salad than a melting pot. And I think that that is part of where the, you know, the... Probably a bagel on the side, if we're being honest. Right. right. But if you look at, like, the Irish culture, the Italian culture, the English culture, whatever, they all just sort of melt in and turn into whatever. But the Jewish culture remains intact. Well, you know what? I think as a Jew and someone that has thought about it a lot, I think you're both right in that sense, is that there have been times when, like, you know, a lot of problems throughout history, the, the first thing that will be the problem is money. And then you look at the people that are involved in the money and just through history, like Jews have been good with money. And to this day, they're still good with money. You know what I mean? Like I like, you know what I mean? Like I, I look at like some of the best accountants in my city and like, yeah, like a lot of them are Jewish names. You know what I mean? And like, so it is a money thing. You know, even like in Germany, it was like right away when things started to go bad for, for Germany, it was like, oh, well, look who's touching all the money, the Jews. So that's how all this got messed up. All the Jews were touching money. Take all their money, take all of their gold. Let's let's figure this out. Let's control the Jews. And you know what I mean? Like it starts there. And then after that, you know, because before that, you know, a lot of people could be secluded in their areas. But, you know, now is like, you know, when I come to the USA, I notice one thing in, in the States. It's like you are an American now. This is America. You know, you start your day off in the classroom, you pledge allegiance to the flag. Like, there's nothing similar to that in Canada. In Canada, you have, like, you know, where I'm from, there's, like, you know, there's, like, uh, like Irish people, Italian people, Greek, uh, big Haitian population, and everyone is who they are. And we don't look at them and be like, yo, you're all Canadian now. If you're going to be here, you're going to be Canadian. And I think after, and I, I'm getting a little sidetracked, but, like, 
between Canada and the USA, like that's a difference. Like Canada is a mosaic. USA is like a melting pot. But Jews, wherever they are in the world, we're talking about like a group of people that, you know, have a, a culture that is ancient and has been around for so long. And then we got to this point in life not too long ago where they went from like a big portion of the population to like less than 2% of the population or 0.2% of the population. So it got to a place where not only were Jews like uh, uh, a, an ancient culture and something that's been around for so long, we also almost lost all of them. We literally almost wiped out all the Jews out of all of existence. So after, yeah, 0.2% of the world population, after the Holocaust, what happens is, and, and like you're right, like Jews don't date outside of Jews. I do, and I would, and I would marry a non-Jew. I would go on on love above all. But what happens is, growing up, I went to Jew camp. And it's really interesting because if you think about concentration camps, where like Hitler's taking Jews in, in carts and murdering them in mass, now Jews have summer camp, Jew camp, we're literally like, I've gone to Jew camp and I've, I've been there for years and you go and you're Jewish boys, Jewish girls, and you know, you do this whole Jewish culture thing, but what happens is, you know, you're 15 years old, the Jewish boys are over here, the Jewish girls are over here, and your adults at night, like your supervision, are like, all right, we're, uh, we're going out for the night, don't you kids go fucking each other, and then they leave, and it's literally like, you go to Jew camp, you learn how to finger girls in the woods, you get your first hand jobs, you get your first blow jobs, all Jewish boys, Jewish girls, you're probably gonna get a blow job from a Jewish girl and be like, that was the greatest ever. I love that girl and I'm gonna marry her. And like, it's literally the, the undertone of Jew camps is to have Jews breed with Jews, to make more Jews because we've lost so many Jews in, in killing camps, let's make Jewish fuck camps. And literally Jewish summer camp is like, I remember very clearly when I was like 16 years old, I was like saying to my friends, I'm like, yo, you got to come to Jew camp. And they're like, why? I'm like, because if you like a girl and she doesn't like you, she's trapped. And eventually she will like you because there's no one else to like. Yeah, because there's the like such a small <laughs> like, implication. Yeah, you're going to get hand jobs for sure. And literally like, it, it's like, that's what Jew camp is to have Jewish boys meet Jewish girls and make more Jewish babies. But like, that's a lot of what a lot of camps are, though. But I don't feel like when I went to camp as a kid, even if it was like religious or that they split the girls and boys up, I guess they never, the, the leaders never would leave us alone long enough that we could just go have a fucking orgy in a tent with a bunch of Jewish people, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> it, it, I think that's part of what camp is. But that does make sense. I, it's almost like a conspiracy that, like, a conspiracy well, to get killed to fuck. No, I so, went to Christian camp. There was no fucking at all. There was they they watched us like Christians. hawks. They don't want you to fuck at Christian I, camp. There's plenty of you guys. Jew camp. They're like, don't go fucking each other. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody got you. laid. No one. I don't know. Anyone even got kissed at that camp. It was impossible. You were never without supervision. It, well, it was certainly harder, but like you could. Hella blowjobs at Jew camp, Woody. You want how to do I get into this? All right, all right. I've, I've yeah, heard how, enough. How do, how do I, how do I get into one of these fucking Jew yeah. camps? I, <laughs> you don't look I, like a Jew. If I, oh, please. I could pull, I could pull off Jew. I, I, I totally all could. All I got to say, you got to, can you pull off Jew if you drop your pants? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. I would say, you just give yourself a little snip. You're good to go. I, I, I feel like it might, it sounds like it would be worth <laughs> it even if that were necessary. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. You know that, that that comes up sometimes. There are men who like have to get midlife uh, circumcisions because their partner's giving them sla uh, something about it, or sometimes they've got issues where like it, it won't come all the way off their head. Like there's there's there can be issues if you're not uh, you're uncircumcised. I don't want to get into a whole like un uncut versus cut talk because you guys out there with your nasty anteater cocks are always so up in arms for some reason with your disgusting, nasty, smelly, schmegma penises, nasty <laughs> motherfuckers with more STDs. You take your extra sensation. Woody's always talking about condoms are, are good because you can last longer. I don't want an extra sensitive what? cock, you moron, you fucking dirty anteater pricked piece of shit. I, for one, am thankful you didn't get into it. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm glad you avoided I mean, it. I, every time I go into it, I get you so are, hateful. You're, you're I, I, I'm glad I, 
I had to why, steer why clear. <laughs> I, I, why, do you, why do you hate the natural penis so much, Kyle? That's there's nothing natural looking about that. There's something wrong with that. I, I don't. Have I, you ever seen like an elephant's ear? It's not like nice looking. It's got a bunch of like fucked up patches. You know, I, like I, that's what your dick skin is like look, if you're not. not have, you, have you ever like, seen Woody's? Good, but it's there. You, you ever it's seen nothing. Woody's dog's ears? That's how a dog's ears are supposed to look. They're supposed to be cut and, and forced to point straight up, and sometimes it turns out wrong, and, but that's so okay were, because it's better than having an anteater cock. If you were a baby and you had the gift of speech, so you would have popped out and been like, all right, take care of this. Yes, absolutely. If I had really? one now, I would get it cut, especially if it was like a gross one. Like, like, like well, what I if it was a normal one? I watch a lot of porn, and sometimes it looks okay. It looks like it's really loose, and like it's just, it's just really just shimmying up and down. And it's like, oh wow, that looks kind of interesting. But still, still, it seems like it'd be I would better for dry masturbating. I, yeah, it, that's what your dick skin is for. Like ugh. when you have a shirt on and you want to go up and down with your sleeve, you can go like that. If you just have skin, you can't really give yourself an Indian burn. Move it, or I can. Yeah. You guys know something it might be a little TMI. I'm an aggressive masturbator. I knew Aggressive. that. Yeah. Aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> what, I, I feel like lubricant is a must. I don't want any dry masturbation. I'm very happy with what I've got and the aesthetic that I have achieved and and, Not me. and been endowed uh, through genetics, I suppose. Uh, I'm, I'm very like like aggressive about it. Aggressive? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like you bruise yeah. yourself or like I'm fucking mad, I'm fucking gay. <laughs> like that. And like sometimes, because there isn't enough Skin, cause like you know, we we had some dude snip it off. Sometimes on the pull down, you get like a perfect horizontal slit, like a. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh goddamn! <laughs> Wait, I can't tell. Andy. You're goofing, right? <laughs> Come here. Of course he's kidding. I know. He didn't, he didn't We're not his... kidding. I'm gonna. You're gonna see right now. I'm gonna what? Yeah. Let... Let okay. No, they're not strangers. Confirm. How do I not? Uh, how many times have I hurt myself masturbating? Not too many. <laughs> it's so. How weird. is he hurting himself? He's tearing his dick skin. He's tearing his dick skin. <laughs> Uh, okay. Where, 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 what area is the dick skin being torn? Maybe we can figure this out with like torque physics. Like, it's, <laughs> like there, like it's like what would be facing the wall if his dick was hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get out of here. Wow. That's, that's like you're 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 gripping way too hard, man. It's not even about the grip too hard. It's about the it's pull just too hard. So serious about the pull down. So you, that the pull down is is everything for you. I see. That's that's the climax. You can't finish without. I can't. I, dude, I, I go into the zone. I don't really watch much porno. I like dim the lights, light some candles, fold my clothes, turn on some fucking death metal, and you just and then beat it. When it's done, I'm like, whoa, man, what happened to me? Why did I do that? Why can't that's I just normal. chill? That's normal. You always have the post finishing where you're like, oh, who, what, what kind of person are you? Mm. Oh, who are you? Even you know when I when I would because I I don't do it often I prefer the imagination. Um, stop me by the way if this is too much. I <laughs> I'm not close to stopping you. <laughs> when I when I'm browsing when I'm browsing uh, like porn sites. Mm. So like you could have like straight, she male or gay. I'll like check off she male and check off gay so that they won't be there and it'll just be straight. And then I'll put in bearded guy or bearded chubby guy. And what I'm looking for is a guy that's me. You want a doppelganger, a I doppelbanger. Wanna I wanna find me, and then whoever I'm doing, whoever that guy that almost looks like me is doing, every time I boot it up, I'm like, oh, Harley, this is what we're getting into today? <laughs> Harley, okay. you old dog. <laughs> oh my God, that's wild, but all right, buddy. You know, I don't really like let myself choose it. I find me. And whatever I'm already doing, I'm just like, oh, you are a freak, buddy. Let's get it. So you're like sitting there enjoying the fact that this was you doing this. You're like, oh, man, look at my dick, really giving it to her. Like, and that, you enjoy that. Yeah. You're superimposing yourself into it. That makes yeah. sense. I'm like, look at that chubby bearded dude. How often is the guy's chilling in there anyway? What's that? 
how often is the guy's face like that low in the screen where like when he's fucking her he just like pops in like hey just wanted to check in and then just goes it's back gotta up, be like, like you know it's gotta be like a chubby bearded dude like just gotta almost look like me enough you know I, I, one thing that's happened to me as i've aged is at least sometimes i am just totally not interested in really really hot chicks because i feel like she wouldn't want me, right? She would. She would be like, ah, no. Yeah, this Closing my door. It's getting deep. <laughs> this guy's like over forty. Six packs. I can't see the six pack anymore. Like ah, you know the guy that she's having sex with is also a perfect specimen. I need some yeah. milf porn, right? So that that chick, she'd be down for me. No, I, know, I, I don't think that. I it. agree I think, with that. I think Woody that maybe you don't like the idea of realizing like the only way that it would be possible to bang that young chick is if like you and Jackie split up and maybe that thought of like your life as this Minecraft millionaire slamming young chicks. It's like, I don't even want to think about that. I got a wife All and that family. Minecraft I'll, pussy. Just, I'll just stay in the <laughs> built zone, you know, Literally I'll stray a one. little bit into danger, but I'll stay in Literally. the built zone. So yeah, that's From, what I feel like it could well, be. I, I got to say also like a couple things like, if it's like got more than one camera, if it's got professional lighting, if the girl is a porn star or has like, you know, if it's anything produced, I'm out. I'm out. Do you it's hate when they try and like fool you? Grainy ass Oh, they can't hidden. fool me. You can't fool grainy me. Grainy ass camera hidden in the top drawer. Like the flash photography, like, like, like yeah, it's, it's gotta be shit. like, I'm like, yo, this is that yeah. real shit. Mm -hmm. I like to know that it was filmed in 1997, but not know the time because it's blinking 12 in the bottom. <laughs> I, I, I need to know that it's real, to know that there was no editing, no thought process. If it ends disappointingly, you know, even more so. You're like, oh, well, you see, they experimented and it didn't go as planned. Like that. That's. <laughs> I like him. I, I, oh, I agree. That's it. Like it can't. You see, like, there's, uh, there's amateur, which is all right. And then there's webcam, which is truly, in my head, like, it, it's, I guess it's not amateur, amateur, but it's semi pro at best, right? These women have no training, no support crews. They're the YouTubers yeah. of the porn world. And it, you know, and I don't like them solo much. I like them with their guys because I'm a little gay. And, you know, there they are, just like doing their thing and, you know, occasionally stopping to like type back to fans. But I'll give them that. You got to earn a living. They, they, those are the people that are truly doing this. And they have a comfort with each other that I appreciate. A comfort. Mm. So you what throw you money at cam girls? No, this is all pre-recorded stuff. I, somehow for it being live seems dirty and cheating. Pre-recorded. I'm about pre-recorded. You know what? I agree with you there. It seems, or actually, I, I would argue that it is cheating if you're doing it live, you know, because that's like you having a real, not a real connection because <coughs> she's a sex worker, but you're engaging with someone with the, like, if you were, if there wasn't a screen between you and you're in the same room, you know what you'd be doing, you know? Right, like, right. Yeah, no, no, no. It's I, on that I, level of cheating, even though it's not physical at all. It, What'd you do? God damn it, Kyle. You're just, <laughs> don't, don't let people Don't do click that. that. Don't click that. Whatever you do, don't click that. <laughs> no, I was... <laughs> but I right, want to see it. Cam girl yeah. fuck machine. Yeah. Uh, she looks like she's having a lot of fun. Good call. <laughs> just, oh, I need to get Wyatt, belly. I need to ask Carly about belly button fucking, so I get it in like eight eight weeks in a row. Nine uh, weeks now. Nine now, Harley. Are you familiar with the with what belly button fucking is? I mean, it's pretty self explanatory, but yeah, get a chick fat enough in her belly button canal, if you will, is long enough that it can be fucked. And we've discovered a porn. I've discovered a porn genre on my own. <laughs> Doing a little digging. Uh, <laughs> Where, where these men fuck these very obese women in their belly button. And it is one of the most, more disgusting, bizarre uh, genres of pornography that I've discovered in my, in my hunts through the interweb. Yeah, there's no part of it that's satisfying to watch. No. Goosebumps. Very. <laughs> Can you imagine how that would feel, though? You ever, like, like get some lint out of there and, it, and, and you, like, go too deep and it feels, you get that feeling? Like, ah, oh, that, yeah. that doesn't. Now imagine that times a thousand because it's a cock ramming your belly button. Yeah, that's the weakest part. Of your skin, there. like that's like uh, I don't even know what's in there. I don't know. Deep. You know I don't know what's place. in there. I, I, I've never. I, what are you, I, I guess you get like a flashlight and dig around in there. Like what's what's at the bottom of my belly button? Anybody here have an Audi? No, I got an Innie. Oh, thank God, Audi. I have like this one where it's like you could you could it's an Innie, but like you could see it, like you could see the knot of the yeah. belly button, whatever. 
Yeah, <laughs> you can see the knot. there, I guess. I saw a guy today, and his belly button was protruding so much through his tight shirt that it was like a bit. Like a clit. <laughs> yeah, it was so gross. It, like he's a nice guy and all, but damn, that was nasty. It wasn't a um. What is it called? It's not a hemorrhoid, but it's like an H a hernia. hernia. Yeah, yeah, it I wasn't know. a hernia, was Something it? Something like that. Right, his belly button. Like, like he's just a big. He's he's got a big beer belly. That's that's what this mm. is about. You that's know, the place where you can get it. Tummy nipple. You, know, you could uh, you could fuck hair. Fuck. Hair? Wait, like, what? Now? Like wrap the hair around your cock and like do a do like a sawing motion. Like when you get no, a bunch of. Oh, that sounds like it would hurt. Yeah, that's like, a, that, that, that's like a man versus wild thing. kind of thing. You like you know you take hair if it's long enough and you can. Saw. Make a loop of it, and you know, put it in your hand or her hand, and the hair—it's all hair, and you just go in that. And it's, if you want to fuck hair, you could do it. When I, mean, I was like, any, is that put your mind that, it. when I was like, you enjoy? 13, 14 years old, pre-internet, learning to masturbate or whatever. I was probably older because I was late bloomer. Anyway, penthouse letters was like my preferred thing, uh, even more so than the picture stuff than the hustle. Yeah, penthouse I, letters was, was where it was at, and. Uh, I read a story of how a guy shampooed this woman's hair to like seduce her and it worked. Like she was just over the top because you know, so in love with the guy and ready to go down because he shampooed her hair. So like way too late, like, you know, into my upper teens, that was like my, my a theoretical go-to move. Like, man, if I could just let a girl shampoo her, if I could just get her to the stage <laughs> where I shampooed her hair, I could finally get laid. Like, oh yeah, like that's that's how you do it. You shampoo their hair, and then they oh, can't. So what are you doing? You. You're like you're like offering to give girls perms and shit. Like, <laughs> like how yeah. do you swing that? You like, like this is me. Like on their head, sophomore, like junior in high hard. school. I'm like, yeah, oh she's so hot. Like, how can I arrange the shampoo so I could get I'm down? I'm sorry to come over here and interject, but uh, your hair doesn't have any. Volume. Volume and it looks a little oily. You want to come back to my place? Like, why would you want to give a little shampoo? How about a quick rinse and a blow dry? My treat, no big deal. It's such an adorable. Yeah. Like, it won't be weird. Hotel? I'll wear my gloves. Although, although I don't doubt that, like you know, a, a girl that you're close with, if you did shampoo her hair, it could be very sensual and it could kickstart a little something. But there's something so adorably misinformed about, like you know, maybe being on MSN Messenger in high school and be like, I don't know, maybe. You come by my place to shampoo you? <laughs> and I was like, yo, what did, did you hit it this How, summer? Uh, like, shampooed three girls. <laughs> you from here. I've got the new Dove three in one. One bottle. I'm stimulating know? mad follicles, bro. Getting it all the time. All up in that. Head and shoulders, bitches. Head and shoulders. Like, no flakes. You're more of a citrus kind of girl. No flakes over here. Uh-uh. Getting it all day. The tingle of self It's like all the Every girl in your class has this amazing heads of hair. <laughs> at the end of it, he just realizes he wants to be a hairdresser. Yeah, he's still just jacking just off at the end of every night. He's sitting on the biggest ever. Every girl has the freshest hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd have to pretend to be gay because at that point you'd talk to all the girls and you never made a move and so none of the guys would believe that you weren't. That's a, that's a TV show pilot. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Let's write that. Let's do it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Just I, like the hydraulic press. Oh, I want to do that. I want uh, so, so basically, um, you know, the hydraulic press channel, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's really popular. Harley, have you and seen I, this? What's that? The, the hydraulic, hydraulic press, press channel. channel. Basically this guy. Yeah, yeah they, they crush things. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling these guys before the show, I was like, you know, I don't think that's really personality driven so much. I know I get that that guy's quirky and, and, and kind of silly and funny, but I don't think you really even see him on camera. I feel like if you just bought a bigger fucking hydraulic press, you could just completely take him out of the loop and you can do it. Like, it's not a big deal. It's just an eBay click away from like one upping him. And I don't mean by just a little like his his thing crushes a thing about this big, maybe even mm -hmm. smaller to crush a thing this fucking big. It's like five or seven, five to seven grand or something. And yeah, if you spend like, if the, the more show, you spend, like the bigger shit you can crush. Imagine he's over there crushing his hockey puck or his Play-Doh. I'm over here crushing entire fucking TV sets, crushing like, I don't know, big concrete, uh, like, dead like, animals. Anything. Dead animals. I, I would, yeah, sure, why not? Anything and everything. Big things. Whole cans of live pain. animals. Well, I think if I was going Puppy to, if I, if I was going to spend money. To, to dive into a section of YouTube. There's one that constantly blows my mind, and I don't know if you guys know about it, but like, all I need to do is go out and buy a Spider-Man costume, buy like a girl, like an Elsa costume, and then we have to film these ridiculously weird childish skits the last three minutes where it's like, Spider-Man and Elsa go for breakfast. 
and we eat like toast together. And if you look these up on YouTube, like look up Spider-Man Elsa or or Toy Egg, you will fucking lose your mind. What? Are people these becoming videos, millionaires being silly? Wait, I'm toy talking egg? about these videos that have 25 million views, 40 million views, 50 million views. And it's like kids with their parents opening toys and their mom and dad dressed like Spider-Man and Elsa. Oh, that's and millions of views every fucking day, like two uploads a day. And I'm like, how is no one talking about this? Yeah, that's You're getting like 400 million views a month. And, and like people are going to panels and stuff and talking at VidCon. And they're like, oh, this gaming channel is blowing. No, no, no. Buy a fucking Elsa costume. Get the kids hooked on it. And kids, kids aren't like adults. Kids, you know what it's like. When you got kids, like they sit there and they're like, I want to watch this movie. I want to watch this movie again. I want to watch this movie again. I want to watch this movie every fucking day for you four know, weeks. Do you know how many times I watched Bed Knobs and Broomsticks? Like like a thousand times when I was six years old. <laughs> a thousand oh. fucking times. I, I had to hide the it. Jungle Dead Book Fred. until the VHS wore out. Yeah. We had to buy another Drop, one. Drop Dead Fred, Serial Mom, Terminator 2. Oh, like, Terminator 2 for sure. on and watch them over and over. Close your boots and your motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, imagine, imagine a kid. Imagine like, you know what? You And like some of these channels, they have 400,000 subscribers, but they get 4 million views. You're like, wow, those kids watch that video 100 times each. That's great. It's crazy. You should see the views on these things. So like, forget getting a hydraulic press. How about you come over to my house dressed like Elsa? I'll dress up like Spider-Man and then we'll make some serious cash. As long as I can I'm wear all a mask. Dead. I'll do anything if, as long as I can wear a mask. That's always, been my, <laughs> That's always been my policy. You give me a mask, I'll do whatever you want. There's um, Evan YouTube is the one. Do you know Evan YouTube? Are you familiar with him? My son watches him and loves him. And he's always asking me, do you love Evan YouTube? Do you love Evan YouTube? And I try to explain to him that I'm not Evan YouTube's demographic, but he's not really getting it because he's, you know, it's just not a thing that he would get. <laughs> and my wife totally hates him because she, she, she's like, I, I try to tell him, like, you're a YouTube hater, right? There's a guy out there just doing his own thing, doing whatever, and you hate him because he's so successful at it. She just like, why would anyone watch that? That sucks. Like they should be watching Woody's Gamer Tag. And like, uh, they're eight. They're eight years old. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and and they they I think they unbox toys. I don't really I haven't really watched many of their videos. But uh, yeah, it's it's a kid. He unboxes toys. Obviously, the parents are like super involved because it's filmed and edited <laughs> and uploaded and everything. But um, tremendously successful channels of kids just being kids with toys. Kills me. It actually, it's it's like it kills me. Not that I'm like, oh my god, I'm so mad at these people. I'm just like, I should collab with these kid channels and just be like, hey guys, look, I got Evan YouTube on Epic Meal Time. You don't get any of this shit now, but when you're like eight years older from today, please come back and watch my videos 15 times. Please do that. <laughs> That's what I should really be. Back have for. you have you ever seen back that video? Um, you remember the guy from Blues Clues, that cartoon? Or it's yeah, not a cartoon. There were that, two. That, that, the show. Well, the original Blues Clues, okay, uh, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard him telling the story of like getting of like getting hooked up with like a Playboy model or something like that, and going out on the date at, and using in his 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 entire game is he's Steve from Blues Clues. His moth story, yeah, it's oh, great. It's great. Oh, it's really good. He's a talented it, storyteller. And he's very good. Basically, this really really beautiful girl she might be on a playboy model right i'm not sure I, about that part i playboy penthouse like like she's a she's a 10 you she's know, a just... 10 and she likes him somehow and his initial reaction was like no you know she's a 10 just forget well, it like why would she like me he's got all that blues clues money she writes him like <laughs> fan mail and then what happens is everyone else on the staff is like you have to do this you have to do this for us you know, you you are our <laughs> yeah. You're our nerd. Never ever ever date someone in this league representative. You need to go out there and make it happen. So he goes out there and he dates this girl. Like not dates her, but like on on their first date. And he goes and picks her up, and things are like so so. And it's not really working right, if I remember the story. Like he's not really crushing it with this girl. And they drive along, and uh, they see a house with balloons on the mailbox. And he's like, oh, shit, this is like my only shot. This is my whole game being Steve. So they go 
and crash a child's birthday party based on the balloons on the mailbox and and suddenly he's in his element all yeah. the kids are loving him and she sees him as steve and it works out well yeah it gets later yeah. um it's been a while since i've heard that but but that, that that's a really funny story and he's a good story very uplifting um yeah. that that that's one of my favorite stories but my all-time favorite like i don't know store long format like told story is um the machine the machine, the machine. Just search uh, YouTube, the machine story, and uh, and, and listen to this thing. Um, I, I, Is I that won't a even. Cartoon? No, no. It's mm -hmm. a man on mic telling a story about like going going to fucking Russia on vacation and ending up being like a a fucking minor t minor it's league a legend. High school class trip. And uh, I guess he learned Russian in high school, but he how was like a goof or something. And how long is it? It's 12 minutes. Uh, but he was a goof and wasn't really good at Russian. So he only knew like a couple of bad, like a couple of words. And, uh, and he goes and, and <laughs> the core well, of it. They guarded by the KGB guys. They got, they got like government agent officers like guarding the, these people, making sure they don't get into anything they're not supposed to be. And, and, and he's wanting to get, get drunk and have a good time, and he ends up in a back room with them. And, and he, it, the only thing he knows how to say in Russian, I guess, is when they ask him who he is, is like, I am the machine. <laughs> and, and they're like, you are the machine? <laughs> like, I am the machine like more confidently and they just love it like it becomes a thing yeah and 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 so he starts drinking and killing it with them and the thing about it is they're fucking soviets not just we said russians they're soviets they're they're not they've been cut off to all that is western culture comedy all that shit so he's bringing up all the old the all-time yeah. great comedy bits they don't all they've never seen it before them. so he's like fat guy in a little coat and they think it's the funniest <laughs> thing in the world <laughs> he it. he's, he's just ripping off rodney danger to bill cosby to jerry you know whoever he's the greatest comedian of all time and he's just wildly popular among these guys and they're like showing their friends i don't think they were kgb maybe they're like um soviet military or something like that but so like see, he becomes like popular with all these guys and he's like the party the party animal and he's known as the machine and as they're traveling <laughs> and, and, and see like he's just a high schooler but this elevates him far and uh, far above the, his his peers now he's in with the with the fucking soviets he's one of them and he's not a the high mom. schooler anymore right so, we left so, this out this is the russian mob he's with Yes, that's what it was. I, I had a hard time remembering exactly. What, there's the Russian fucking mob. That's what it is. Yeah, it's Russian mafia. The, that's who he's in tight with. Like the Russian <laughs> mafia loves this motherfucker. So they 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 they're on a train, right? Uh, g going across Soviet Russia, and at some point, they decide to rob the train. Eh? So they start robbing the train. They're they're like they're literally robbing the train. And at some point after that, his teacher comes into the middle of this and starts talking down to him as a teacher is wanting to do to a pupil. She's like telling him, that she's like, this is unacceptable. It's not going to happen anymore. You're done, mister. And the mafia guy, you do not talk to machine this way. <laughs> <laughs> like, bitch slaps her. And she's just like, fuck you. Then the, the train gets like pulled over by like Russian special police or some bullshit. And there's this whole thing where like, the, you know, they're telling on them for, for robbing them. They're, they're telling that, yeah, these guys robbed us, the machine and all those motherfuckers over there. They, they're robbing the, 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 the train car. And the teacher, she's telling on them too. She's telling these cops. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And the cop comes over to the, 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 the American kid, the, the machine. And he's sitting there, he's terrified because it's the fucking Russian police. They're going to lock his ass up. He's in Soviet Russia, fucking robbing trains with the mafia. He's going down. And the guy says, uh, I understand that you are the machine. <laughs> <laughs> they, they fucking heard of him. <laughs> heard of his, of his greatness has preceded him into this new area faster than the speed of a train. And, and he goes out that night, gets drunk and, and drives the police car. Um, gets wasted, goes to strip clubs with those people. That's how that story goes. I, I paraphrased it, but it's an incredible story, and he's a great storyteller, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm going to have to watch that after yeah. this. That sounds really funny. It's really great. Really That's the one that's linked right here? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I know this guy. This guy, he's a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he's good. And the machine. 
Well, it's time to talk about me undies. I think my favorite uh, underwear company of all time. I'm gonna I'm tell you. I'm gonna tell you something that happened to me the other day. It was a bit embarrassing. I, I uh, I've been very ill and I sharded. Uh, uh, I oh, sharded. Yeah. I sharded on my me undies. It wasn't a big mess, but it was enough that I knew the the underwear had been fouled. I knew for a fa- It was for sure. So Did it absorb the the poop water. There was no poop water. It was it was just a little dollop of poop. Just a little dollop of poop. All right, like a imagine like a Hershey's kiss, uh, just dropped right there on your undies, but you know melted, and uh, and, and I was like, oh <laughs> shit, exactly. And, uh, so so I, I pull over. This is I'm driving when this happens. I pull oh, over. Oh, the worst time. Yeah, right. I pull over. I'm wearing jeans, my me undies, my camo ones, my favorites. So no um, one will know. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I see you pants, I wearing my camo me undies, and I got my I got my flip flops on. And so uh, I pull into a, uh, a QT gas station. Yeah. Anybody knows what a QT gas station Quick is? Trip. It's a very nice gas station, yeah, nice clean nice. bathrooms, and they always have a handicap stall. Um, Harley, I'm getting a little bit of reverberation coming back, th- feedback through your mic. So I go into the handicap stall. Nobody's in the bathroom. Take down my pants very carefully and step out of my flip-flops carefully, never putting my bare feet on the floor, just transitioning from air back to sandal. Balancing a bit, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I got pretty good balance. So, so I managed to get my jeans completely off. Now I carefully remove my undies, inspect them, and in fact, they have been befouled slightly, enough so that I'm not going to continue with them. And I have a decision to make. Do I leave my, my, my pooped-in me undies here in this racetrack bathroom, this pair of underwear that's been with me for months and months, at least 150 wears so far, and not a whole, not even much degradation. They're a little fuzzy, but that just makes them softer. And I decided, no, I'm going to fold these up, stick them in my pocket, and I'm going to take them with me. These can be salvaged, and I did. And I, 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 I no, have that. No, 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 no. You absolutely. did not fold up poopy underwear and put it in your I pocket fold, and walk out of that bathroom. I cleaned the little bit of poop that was on them with some toilet paper. I folded them up very neatly, stuck them in my pocket, and I took them home and I hand washed them separately. And then I threw them in the cycle and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to wear them again. I salvaged those MeUndies because MeUndies are the absolute greatest underwear out there on the market today. You wear underwear every day. That's 365 days a year, rain or shine. You need it to be extraordinary without an insane price tag. Me Undies understands this, and that's why they've created the world's most comfortable underwear. Luxury at half the retail price you'd find anywhere else. It's made out of a special fabric called Modal, and it is so freaking soft, it feels wonderful. Me Undies is made, for, uh, is made from Modal, as I said. It's, uh, it's twice as soft as cotton, and it's definitely poop twice repellent. as soft as whatever you're wearing right now. It doesn't repel the poop, but it, it, it resists it. It, it absorbes it and wicks away any foul <laughs> odors that might occur. <laughs> fecal matter. Might be occurred. Uh, most of us wear underwear every day, unless we shit ourselves. So, so why settle for low-quality multi-pack underwear that's scratchy and lame? Me Undies has tons of colors and styles, from the camo ones that I've got to some tie-dye ones that I've also got. I got, I got both, went both ends of the spectrum. Which one? With you that. pooped in the camos? Pooped in the camos. Uh, they're for men and women, which means you and your lady can finally have matching underwear. They release a new design every month, which I think is really cool. And on top of that, they even offer free shipping to the United States and Canada. Me Undies has money back guarantee, so if you don't love your first pair of underwear you get, you get to keep it for free. That's right, they don't want your used underwear back. Definitely don't want mine. So if you have nothing to lose, uh, so uh, the best part about all of this is that we're offering 20% off your first order when you use our URL, uh, MeUndies.com slash PKA. So click the link in the description or go to MeUndies.com slash PKA to get 20% off of the, uh, your first order. Check them out. Don't poop in yours. Be a little, have a little more foresight. I didn't put them in my pocket. Actually, I stuffed them down the front of my pants because, like, I felt like I couldn't yeah. adequately conceal a pair of shat in underwear in my pocket. Well, and that whole area in the pants, that, that area had already been compromised with poop. And oh, so it, like, well, I mean, not... I cleaned myself up, of course. I'm in a toilet, you know. I, I, I got back to 100%. Yeah, I know you're not an animal. I'm just saying that that's where the poop was. It was contained. Yeah. And there's no need to spread that to the pocket, you know, isolate and yeah. quarantine. I kind of so put it did. in, like, the crotch area, like, like, like down there. Did you so... notice that there was any difference with the, the modal reacting to the poop than when you would poop in, say, some cotton hanes or something similar? Hmm. If I'm being honest, I don't think MeUndies are better at being shat in than, say, Hanes. Um, that, that scratchy cotton fabric is very good at containing large amounts of poop, from what I understand. Well, so, so maybe Modal isn't the best underwear to shit yourself in, but that's probably not an issue for many of those out there anyway. So check out our link, get your savings, and uh, I really do stand behind that underwear uh, uh, and, and inside of it and, and everything else. I really like that underwear, so check it out. 
you guys want a new topic? Yeah, um, yeah Harley. I, uh, uh, real quick, unless you've shit stuff recently. I got a shit in underwear story. Yeah, go for it. We've so, all... <laughs> uh, my brother <laughs> uh, lived in New Zealand for a while. Um, remember how I said I went to Jew camp? Yes. Yeah. Lots of Jews have the same things. Like, especially socks and underwear, because all Jews will go buy the cheapest underwear. So, you would get your name... Like you would have Harley Mornstein basically like ironed into your underwear, like on the back. So that, like that's Harley's underwear. And then, you know, there would be like, you know, other Jew names on other Jew underwear. But um, <laughs> what happened was I lived in New Zealand for a while, um, for about like 10 months. And uh, one time he was at, uh, at this mall and he just thought he had a wet fart and he didn't get away more than that. He uh, pushed it out and he just completely killed it. Like completely just splattered all up in his shit and just destroyed it. <laughs> and uh, so he ran to the bathroom. And uh, he took the underwear off. He took his shorts off and he took his underwear off and he like put it on the toilet. And, uh, and then he stood there at the sink like washing like his balls and ass like in the <laughs> sink, like in the mall. And like people were coming in and he's like, sorry. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> shitty body. And because he's not like local, he doesn't really care. <laughs> never see these people again, you know? So he uh he's washing his shitty balls and his ass and stuff like that. And then he put on his shorts and he free balled. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, you're so gross. I'm like, you're standing there washing your shitty body, and he's like, Yeah, I'm like, and all these people, strangers have to look at your shit covered balls. He's like, Yeah. And I'm like, and on top of it, you left like a gross diarrhea underwear in in the toilet. Like someone comes in to use it, and like you are one of the monsters that leaves their <laughs> shitty. And he's like, yeah, and he's like, and the best part is Harley Mornstein is ironed onto the waistband. Like, in my underwear, my name is like ironed onto it. It says Harley Mornstein, and it's covered in shit. And it's in a New Zealand. That's the reason why that janitor has has tongs in their arsenal kit now. Like that's just not only that. I I assume that like one, like on an epic meal time or an Instagram, when someone's like, "Oh, Harley Morrison, fucking monster," I'm like, "This might be the guy that cleaned up my shitty underwear in New Zealand in that bathroom." And he was like, "I will forever remember the name Harley Morrison." Another time, I got really, really, really wasted, and my brother was like in Thailand. And, like, this is, like, before EMT and stuff. And, like, I was, like, on the shitter. And, like, I was, like, so destroyed. I, like, passed out face forward. <laughs> and, like, my dad comes in. My dad having the great sense of humor that he does. Me, like, lying face down on my bathroom floor at, like, 19 years old. Like, you know, all, like, shit butt. Takes a picture <laughs> of me. And uh, he sends it to my brother. And my brother, like, saw it, like, while he was checking his internet at a coffee shop. But then he went and made the background of all of the computers, that picture of me face down in the bathroom. And both of these things I thought were hilarious until I kind of like became a personality out there. So like someone could see that in Thailand, that computer thing, that shit butt guy and be like, wait a second. Is that a sauce box? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's fucked up. Well, that's I um, I I got a disproportionately high number of poop stories. I, I think it's absolutely I mean, proportional. I think most people don't talk about it. Um, Robin Quivers of the Stern Show, uh, her she has a great poop story. She um, she goes out for a morning run and basically shits herself big time, like running down her legs, out of her like running shorts, down her legs, um, everywhere diarrhea. And she there's like a a Mexican like um guy hosing the, the sidewalk with a hose and she has to ask to borrow the hose to, to wash the shit off herself so she can get back to her apartment. Um, humiliation. Like, it's worse because she's famous. I, I don't think the guy knew her. It, like, like, mm. And this happened like, you know, going back. I don't think many people know what she looks like anyway unless they're like fans of the show. I don't know. She is hot though. Like, like I, I think Robin's pretty hot and she's got, uh, I think they're G-size boobs. They're enormous. They're gigantic, and she's had them like, uh, like, reduced. Uh, like reduced. Also, and, and when they do that, they make them all like perfectly shaped and, and extra supple, like no natural titty could fat? ever be. Um, no, she's not fat. She's kind of a health freak. She had, um, 
She kind of yeah. sometimes she looks a bit overweight, but but yeah, but I don't I think, think of so. Her as chunkyish. Nah, pull up some like photos of her. She's last time I saw her, and, and I I would I think if uh, I would totally be like Robin Quivers, like I don't know, like boy toy or whatever. Like I would totally be down for that. I think she's like sixty, sixty two, somewhere in there. But that chick is worth tens of millions of dollars. She's like super adventurous and travels all around the world uh, and does all kinds of like interesting experiences. And I'd be down for that if you're traveling with Robin Quivers, who I would imagine, you know. You made it very clear, Kyle. You're down for them big ass titties. Yeah, that would be nice too. <laughs> I, I want to see them. Sounds like the what you started is, off with. That's what I started off with. Size boob and blah 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 blah. And she blah. might be interesting since she's been on the radio for thirty oh, she, years. But mainly those boobs. I, if I'm being honest, she's the worst part of that show, and I feel like yeah, she, she adds so very little. And she's not funny. She's got a bad sense of humor. She's often off key and doesn't get the the smart jokes that Fred's dropping back there. Yeah, I get that. that I, I think it's more about his chemistry with her and how he likes to play off her. But she's not even. She can't read the news. She can't read the fucking news. I, a while back, she was like. Oh, and the two sports teams, whatever, name them. They, the Blue Jays beat the, the Milwaukee fuck tons last night, uh, three to eight. And they were like, oh, no, that, that was two weeks ago, Robin. What are you reading? She's reading two-week-old news, and nobody even caught it. That's her job. She's the she's, news lady. She's not very good. They used to have whole segments when ONA was still a thing where they would just make fun of Robin. Really? On, on the Stern show because she just is always – like fun wrangling and all the clips they would play of like Howard or a guest like starting to go crazy and her just always like oh guys stop stop you you stop you're being crazy and it's just like oh you don't need that person there to rein it in let people kind of go crazy I don't you like know? her on the show I, I love the Stern show but 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 I, I think that he loves her on the show and that's enough for me because I because I like the show and, and the way it works so much but if 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 I'm like Stern's boss which he doesn't have anymore I guess um I wouldn't want her on the show if it was if it was up to me. I'd rather stick like Artie back in there. I wish Artie was back on the show and didn't have that awful drug problem. Oh, um, he was great on the show. I liked him a lot. Yeah, I thought he was a. Am I wrong? He was an SNL guy or something. Uh, um, Mad TV. Oh, that's kind of the same. It was like the shitty SN, the shittier SNL. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, uh, he was a really funny guy. I, I like his stand up pretty good. Mad TV was okay. Mad TV had this skit where it was like. Um, who was that home improvement guy? Um, Tim the Toolman Taylor. Well, no, the real one that not not the, T Tim Allen's based off of the Bob Vila. Bob Vila. So they had a Bob Vila rip off on uh, Mad TV, but he was like terribly accident prone. So every step of the way through a project, like he would get a corkscrew stuck in his eye, a chainsaw into the kneecap, and it was always really gruesome, gory, and over the top. And so he just he he he'd be like pruning a Christmas tree and just snip his thumb the fuck off and blood's just gushing and he's like ah and and progressively he's losing more and more blood so he's getting pale and lightheaded and yeah let's 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 check this out it's called there was a year by the way where Mad TV was definitely better than SNL I agree SNL yeah, had they had a strong year I remember that and yeah Will Sasso was clutch can, can we watch like a minute of this Woody sure I mean it's 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 like. Have you seen Will Sasso's vines? Yeah, he, he's the first, he's the reason why I got Vine. Like, I watched him and I'm like, hey, this guy's making this app funny. Like the lemon one he does? That was, yeah, I exactly. think that's him, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's watch uh, I'm trying to Paul get this thing Timberman's to workshop. Fit properly. Hang on Paul a second, Timberman. <laughs> so good. Like, like um, I. I, I just I love. I there were a few things I like. There was one. There was who was ready? the guy who was yes. Ready, set, play. Well, hi there. Welcome to Paul Timberman's workshop. I'm Paul Timberman. You know I love Christmas, and I like to think the number one symbol of peace and love and giving and sharing around the world is the Christmas tree. Which is what we're working on today. <laughs> See, this is his face is so good. From the outdoors to shape it. Now I got my handy hand pruner around here somewhere, so I can. Oh, here it is. Oh. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Now, most of these branches are no bigger than your finger, but you got to press real hard because they're real strong. He's having a hard time seeing because that eye. <laughs> oh. Jesus. All right, I think you get the idea. Hey, uh, tell you what, Monty, you uh, just pop that in a little plastic bag, you put it in the fridge, I'll pick it up on the way to the ER. Thank you. All right, then. This here's our tree. 
It's a noble fur. Noble fur is known as a sweet, sultry mistress of the woods, and this one here is a fine, classy lady. Now, as you can see, the... <coughs> did it again. Got the <laughs> see, boys at the lock kind of cut it uneven there. You're gonna is it bloody on the bottom? Edge on the bottom <laughs> I think the boys hurt themselves. Now, this lady's too big to fit on my table saw, so I'm going to have to put it right here on this crate and even her out. This won't go well. Go. Come on now. You gotta wear your safety goggles at all times. I can't stress that enough. Now here we go. Now you see why these goggles are so important. You gotta keep your eyes on the wood at all times. Can't be looking at my hands. Oh God. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> That's a commercial. Paul Timberman of Paul Timberman's workshop. You know, people always ask me, what's the best way to keep your tree mounted to Christmas? And I tell them there's nothing better than the Santa Jaws. It's a new modern way to keep your frisky tree in place. Works kind of like a big old bear trap. And it comes in three different sizes. Santa Jr., Chris Kringle, and big old Saint Nick. <laughs> Santa Jobs, the best thing under your tree this Christmas. My name ain't Paul Timberman. <laughs> the makers of Santa Jobs would like to wish you and yours a safe and happy holiday. I, think I get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> he Ultra violent. to injure himself. Later, he'll shoot a few uh, Phillips head screws into his uh, into his leg as well. You know, it, it's, it's always very bloody and gruesome. It's my knock on all these skit shows. I, I feel like they come up with ten seconds worth of humor and then just repeat it for five minutes and then just do that until that, the hour runs out. I mean, look at SNL. They stretched Bush's same bit to like a decade, <laughs> I, a decade I, worth of Saturdays. The only thing good on SNL to me is the news. Like when they do that, it's funny and it's original every week. Yeah, like, there's a few sketches know, I love. I, uh, I, I went to an SNL like uh, taping about a year ago or two years ago. And uh, it's like really insane. It's like really insane. Like they sit down like on Monday and they're like, yo, everyone, ideas now. Ideas now or you're fucking fired. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shit idea. Shit idea. Decent. Put it on the side. Maybe. That's okay. All right. And they have this crazy list. And they're like, all right, let's start running through. Okay. These aren't plausible. These aren't plausible. And now it's like Wednesday already. And it's like, we got to do rehearsals. Start cutting skits, cutting them down. It's like, you don't get the time to really make it funny. And then when you think about it, it's like, you know, how could SNL ever compare for this new generation if, like, they could just pull out their phone and they're like, six seconds, next, 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 next. Like, SNL was good in a way because it was the only place you'd get, like, stupid, almost R-rated comedy week by week. But, like, now, like, with YouTube and stuff or, like, Vine, it's just, like, it's even shorter, sweeter, crazier. You don't have to care about, like, brands or commercials and stuff. So it's just like, you know, SNL is one of those things that, like, the internet age really kind of took the piss out of. You know what I mean? I look yeah. at, like, even, like, yeah. I remember, like, I, I watched the Andy, Andy Milanakis show back in the day. And it was just like, oh, my God, this guy's so stupid. He puts everything on TV. But then, like, you know, once YouTube comes out, it's like, oh, my God, everyone's so stupid. And they put everything on the internet. It's like, it kind of, like... I kind of like the Andy Milanak. What's that? His internet's going bad. He uh, everybody liked know. that for me. I, I liked the Andy Milkis show. Yeah, I liked it too. I liked it also. Did you ever watch his vines? Yeah, I did. I watched his vines. They're yeah. absurd when he's like smashing dishes and, do, and just breaking stuff. Dude, what the I, fuck I is actually, that? I met him in person a bunch of times and like I uh, even went to his house like after one of those vines where like there was still shit all over the floor. And I'm like, this is fucking insane. But what's really funny is uh, last year at VidCon, he like, you know, at VidCon they like put you up in the hotel and someone pays for it and all that stuff. And someone put him up and like he had this video on his YouTube channel called like meet and greet at VidCon with Shea Carl. 
and when you clicked it, it was him in his hotel room in the VidCon hotel, like smashing the TV in the hotel room and like trying to pull it off because it's like screwed in and like taking it off and like smashing it on the ground and like grabbing the paintings in the hotel room and smashing them. Now I'm not saying that's cool, yeah. but there was this really intense like shock value to it because like i'm in the same room <laughs> and I'm all my shit and i'm like damn i thought i was like a badass on youtube I was like, well, that shit. Like, someone's got to pay for that yeah. you know? <laughs> <But> like <laughs> there was like on the same level of his vines you know where he's like smashing shit where you're just like oh my god is something wrong with him what's happening you know it was like one on one of those levels where i was like damn yeah um it, it's just I don't know why it's funny, but it's just interesting to watch. I, I, I watched a bunch of those. When I saw him smashing those dishes, I don't remember the subject matter of all of them. They're all pretty silly like that. Um, you know, and, and it's just fine. smashing just, shit. Just smashing shit. And, it, and, and just being silly while he does it. It's being random. Uh, I don't know. I like him. Hey, but what, is, what's his name on Vine? Just Andy Milanakis? I don't recall. This has been like a year at least. Andy Milanakis on Vine, yeah. And I, I actually almost moved when I lived in L.A., I almost moved into his building like I would have been his neighbor. I used to go there a lot. And he was like painting crazy paintings and stuff like that. And uh, he's like a really, really nice guy. It's like he saves all of his crazy for his content. Because like when you hang out with him, he's not crazy at all. Hmm. You know, he's like, you know, he does like a lot of voice acting. I think he does like a voice acting on Adventure Time and stuff like that. He's got a whole bunch of voice acting gigs, um, you know. And he's, he's like the opposite been... of shoe nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy and successful. Huh. I didn't know he was still doing anything. <coughs> yeah, he does, he does voice acting and stuff. And, uh, you know, he's still, like, musically inclined. He, he was, uh, they had that, uh, that band, like, uh, two years ago, the rap group, Him, Dirt, Nasty, and uh, Riff Raff. Yep. They released an album. Yep. I remember that. That, that, was, that was silly, too. All right, it's time for a tracker app. Smart cars, smartphones, smart homes. Technology has made everything smart. But when you lose those smart things, it makes you feel really stupid. Tracker makes losing things a thing of the past. Tracker is a coin-sized device that locates misplaced keys, wallets, bags, computers, anything in seconds. Just pair the tracker to your smartphone, attach it to anything, and find its precise location with the tap of a button. It's that easy. Lose your phone, press the button on the tracker, and your phone rings, even when it's on silent. With over 1.5 million devices, Tracker has the largest crowd GPS network in the world. So your lost item shows up on a map, even if it's miles away. Never lose anything again with Tracker. Listeners to our show here get a special discount of 30% off your entire order. So go to thetracker.com and enter offer code uh, PKA. The hardest thing you'll ever have to find is their website. Thetracker.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 PKA. I haven't lost the thing that I have my tracker attached to yet, but I'm very confident that if I should, I'll be able to track it right down. I forgot to attach my tracker to anything, and right before the show, I thought I had lost it. Uh. Uh, I, didn't even have, I, I, I didn't even have to use the service, though, because I found it. But I'm sure I would have been able to find it with the service <laughs> even easier. Of course. So, so there you go. Yeah, those things are pretty nifty. Um, I, I, uh, I got it on a range bag, but... I feel like uh, I would definitely put it on like my little dog if we were on yeah. in some sort of scenario where we were away from home and maybe like I, I, I don't know what like if the dog were uh, if he was a hunting dog especially I know my if my uh, that Belgian Mal we've got Dak if he ever gets outside he just runs away. Well, you want him to leave. You don't want to be able to track him. Down. <clears throat> well, I mean, Kitty would, and and it's he's an expensive dog. I, I guess we should go fucking get him. Those are sunk costs. Right? I mean, you should, yeah. you should really consider his present value, which is negative. I, I, that was no, so he's awesome. a good guard dog. That's exactly what it is. You already paid the, like, three grand for that hellhound. Yes. Throw it away. Or get exactly. It. At this point, he is just a continued liability. Quite no, right he's right totally now. a good guard dog. Like, that dog would murder somebody. He's outrageous. Yeah. He's You know who vicious. else would murder someone who's good at guarding things? You. He is, yeah, he but... is made redundant by FPS Kyle. Well, I think he can smell strangers in the dark ain't feared of nothing and can like you know leap 20 fucking feet in a single bound like he is a superior fighting machine hand to hand as a human a, i it, bet at your time in the long dark. jump is better than the dogs uh, no way he does have the smell advantage i'll give you and the sight and the teeth those and chompers are legit how's his marksmanship terrible right terrible. 
Jeez. Mine is on point right now. I was shooting today. I was fucking like like I um I was shooting. <coughs> I was shooting this suppressed 9mm AR-15 um, that Chad brought over with a little red dot. And at 50 yards, there were some targets about this big, but they were lying flat. So I could just see a slither of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm just plinking them every single time. And the bullets are ricocheting up and chopping tree limbs down. Um, that thing was incredible. I've been practicing a lot. And I'm pretty fucking sharp right now, especially with my handgun. Um, we've been shooting a lot. I, I shot so much steel that I shot the paint all the way off of it like three times. I am not sharp. I went to the range, and then I did that shooting competition. I went to the range to sort of get the rust off, and I realized I needed more range time. And I shot the competition and uh, got disqualified. So I this is a, suck right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame that that happened to you. This is some of the new ammunition I'm uh, messing around with. I think, if, I think if I show it like this, it'll focus. What caliber is that, Kyle? So it's if you look, there seems to be like a ball in the center. Right. And then like three uh, segments that surround it. And uh, so it's a 45 uh, ACP, and what happens is that ball is tethered to each of those three segments by a, uh, a cord. And so when this round goes through the air at like seven yards, you have one bullet in the middle and three following it um, tethered by a cord, you know, in a pattern going outward. So you, you shoot, not spinning, um, the, the middle. Rifled. Well, the, the, the center bullet will, well. Yeah, I guess it would fucking... I don't know what it does. It needs to be shot in some high-speed photography. That's a very good question you brought up. I, because it's coming apart like that, God knows. But it shoots pretty fucking accurately, and I can only imagine what it would do to... Yeah, Chiz wrote, what a human-destroying round. Um, but it really is. and they, they, It comes in like a presentation case, like 10 rounds to a box, and they're, all, they're in there in a circle... Uh, like 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 a flower like flower petals like going around a, a central uh, point and I don't know how much they cost I got sent them but that's what I'm packing right now they're they're, uh, they're pretty badass. Amir Amir got a really crazy gun. What did Amir he got a a Chris Vector, <coughs> and it's like it's this gun I see in every movie. Like once I went to Amir's house and saw his Chris Vector, every single movie uses this exact same gun. It's like whether the movie's set like now or like 20 years in the future, like in Total Recall, I always see the same gun. I'm like, that's so crazy. I'm like, I'm always using this gun, you know? And I went to Amir's house, one of my buddies, the chef on Epic Meal Time, and uh, he's got this gun. And I look at him, I'm like, this is so crazy. I never thought you could get this in Canada. I never thought you could have something that looks like this, this like robo future gun. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, Kyle's going to go get her his fully automatic one i'm sure he has a fully about. automatic chris vector i think i'm I've sure shot he'll come it. back with three of them it, it recoils yes, okay, very little i'll tell you the differences that i've noticed that that bum amira because it's canadian he has a long barrel on the front he can't have the short barrel and it has uh it's 10 millimeter rounds but it's a semi-automatic and it counts as a pistol <laughs> <laughs> this is silenced too <laughs> So if you take that silencer off, you have like the short, it's the short nose? Short barreled rifle, yes. Oh, that's so good. I want to call a beer up right now and be like, yeah, I got shit, bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you that is the exact gun that you see in all the future movies. They just kind of like add a flashlight on it or something or some Every laser. Every movie uses Chris Vectors now. Every single movie, like Judge Dredd. Uh, total Recall, like every movie, whether, like I said, it's whether it's today or it's in the future, always Chris Vectors, and it's like a really interesting looking gun. But like Amir kept talking about Chris Vector for the longest time, and I was like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Like I thought he was like a fucking pop star or something. <laughs> Chris Vector, the Chris Vector. Yeah, I went to his concert, man. I think there is a guy named. I think it's a guy named Chris. I think um, it is a guy. Named, his last name is Chris or something. Amir yeah, yeah. Talking. I've Probably met Vector. him. I've met but him. I got a question. Twice. So like yours is fully automatic. Mine is, is not fully automatic. It's a short barreled rifle, though. Ah, I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it would you be. See, I think in Canada, I don't know, but I think it counts as a pistol in Canada. And that's it, why he could get it. His doesn't have a stock, then. That's what it is. He got the one without the stock. Yeah, but he, uh, it also it, it has it has to have the long barrel on it. He can't yeah. have the it's short barrel. It's got the barrel. long barrel and, well, uh, what and is, no stock. What is like, or I don't know if it's safer, but what's more legal about the long barrel as opposed to not having the barrel? All right, so here's the deal with that. They figure if you, what they don't want you to have is a long gun, a rifle or a shotgun, a more powerful firearm. 
that's made to be compact to conceal to do something bad because they figure that's what's up. In reality, the reason that we want these short barreled rifles is because they're nifty. You know, they're fun. They're lighter. They're you can do more things with them. It's a it's a customization thing. Um, but what they don't want is for you to have like a sawed-off shotgun. So the way the classification comes down is this is a handgun until I put a stock on it. If I added a stock that came back here that attached to my shoulder, then I've created a short-barreled rifle illegally if I don't have an SOT or haven't applied for the, uh, for the correct paperwork and everything. Um, so you can't do that unless this had a much longer barrel, and then all of a sudden it's a rifle that I've made. So it can, it can get into kind of a weird gray area there, but I think what he has, it's, um, it's the Chris Vector. Um, it probably looks exactly like this. <coughs> I think his just doesn't I have... I think he had attached a piece, actually, to the back of it. No, he wouldn't do that. Mm. No, that's, re that's, that's too illegal to do. Yeah, he might have. You know, he wouldn't oh, have I got that. a picture of it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Don't, don't, don't put that on the internet. It's, it should be bad mojo. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's actually, he, he cherishes his gun license so much that he, whatever he does is not illegal. Oh, I'm sure he like, applied for, for, for a SBR yeah, permit. I don't know how Canada gun, handles that. Once he got the gun, he, like, his... The way he talks about things or anything with guns is like completely different based on like what the schooling of it is because he would never want the dude. He like I'm, I'm going to say he's obsessed with guns. Like who the fuck am I talking to? But, like, <laughs> but like, he literally all he does is spend his money on guns, gun parts and art now. Yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, he's just it's just a longer barrel. That's that's the deal. He could have the stock. What yeah, kind of art yeah. Does he I don't know where it is, with his guns. It, but it's it's a dumb picture because it's me like with my shirt off, like wasted, holding the gun up. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol and guns are bad. Uh, ah, as long as they're unloaded. We uh, remember when I, I've got that law rocket over here that we poured the shots into that girl's mouth with. That 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 was the fun funniest part about that whole experience. Oh my god, it was like a dirty bazooka shot. <laughs> yeah, it's a nasty bazooka shot. That's exactly what it was. And uh, oh, fuck. At, at one point, one girl got belligerent and crazy and had to be asked to leave, basically, and then wouldn't leave. But we couldn't leave her outside with my vehicles. Because yeah, how did she get so insane so fast? Like, what happened? Um, so we were inside filming the meal, and it was time for, like, actual you know speaking parts all the b-roll was done the cooking was done we had the meal it's time for you to do your thing it's the intro part you know you're like ah and we got the meal and you're you know it's, it's the main <laughs> part and everything and she's over there and there are people in the room with us but most of the people have went on the back porch because they don't want to disturb us and she can't keep her fucking mouth shut she keeps giggling like wow i want to be a fucking lawyer yeah yeah she keeps <laughs> like like going into drunk giggliness bullshit like mid roll and like ruining takes and like you know I'm I'm happy we're all enjoying doing the video but we want to get it wrapped so we can go move on to you know the next part of the night of course you know that's war it, it's that's the work part of the night but you know there so you can fuck both of them whatever and so like she so she has to be asked to go outside and that got her really upset and then I was with the blonde one so the brunette one got real mad or upset about something and she she's like gets her friend and they go to leave and I'm like okay well we'll leave. And they're like, no, we're not going to leave now. And they're just staying up there by both of my cars. And I'm like, I can't leave this crazy drunk bitch by my car. She's going to. And you just, you just got this car. Yeah. Literally days before. Yeah. It's like brand new. My brand I remember. New. And, and, and so I'm like, I'm not going to leave her up there. And I'm calling my cop buddy. I'm like, what do I do? She won't fucking leave. And he's like, well, if we get involved, she could say it'll be a he said, she said thing. He's like, you just want her to go away on her own. You don't want us to come out. He's like, I can't come because. You're in the county, not the city. Um, but what I will do, let me know when they leave, and I'll lock their ass up DUI. So I was like, good. So, <laughs> so, so we made that happen. Um, when that oh, they were both wasted, and they just drove off? Yeah, when that drunk nightmare finally got down the road, yeah. They, they, it's so funny. I remember like you had like uh, you had like a sick truck, and you just got your car. And I remember a couple guys from EMT at the time, and they were like, yo, how come, like, we get the same views as FPS, but, like, he's got these awesome cars. And I'm like, well, 
I guess I could fire you both and buy myself those awesome cars. And you're never, I remember, I remember they were like, you were like splitting the cost of that grill with the network. And I was like, man, they should pay for that fucking grill for Harley. That's bullshit. Harley shouldn't yeah, have yeah. Buy for a fucking grill. He's the yeah. sauce balls. He should be, they should be making grills rain on this man. They should build him a master grill. Like, but it's so funny. I remember like, like, like at the time when we left, like they were like, man, like Kyle's got that huge place. And like, he's got like all this shit. And, like, like, how's he got, like, all this money? And they're, like, looking at me like I'm hiding money. And I'm, like, yo, like, I pay people. Kyle is there with, like, you know, one other person killing it. Like, you know, there's six of us. Yeah, we – You're – you, you're Kyle's guns. <laughs> <laughs> you're his cars. You, you know, I'm, like, it's a different setup. But, like, they literally – they didn't. It was too. Everyone was so young so back bare then. bones for so long. Like I mean, super bare bones. Like my camera cost a grand for so long. Like I filmed, a, I filmed like a quarter million dollars worth of videos on a grand camera. Like a nine. I, rem I remember. I didn't pay for that. That was given to me as part of another. <coughs> um, I didn't pay. I didn't like pony up for a camera until years into it. Like um, uh, and you know my just my you know my cousin scott just shooting film you know it is like he's not a fucking cameraman he's just a guy who's not afraid of getting hit by a piece of a refrigerator and won't flinch are we talking about gator yeah gator's the man <laughs> <laughs> gator rolls into our party that night just having whipped two dudes asses in the street like he's bruised up and bloody knuckles he's just knocked two guys unconscious and he's at our party now <laughs> I, he came in and i'm like yo i don't know this guy but all of a sudden like my don't get stabbed radar is up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Not that I think he's going to stab me, but the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up like I'm a cat and I got to be on alert, you know? <laughs> he will turn back on the gates. He, he could stab you. It's, it's never completely out of the out of question, you know, a little stabbing. Um, but yeah. Will that Gator channel ever make a resurgence? No, God, no. See, do you know about the Gator channel, Harley? I guess so, right? The boar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was hilarious. Think I would miss Gator's debut. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny, man. I was thinking that with Scott today. Um, I remember, you know, like doing uh like early on in Epic Meal Time, like fuck, like I'm, I've grown so much. Like you know, at the time I was 25 years old. Now I'm 30. I remember like, I remember I saw this tweet once and it was like, I'm 30, but I act like I'm 20. But then I see 20 year olds and I'm like, no, I act like I'm 30. And it's like, you know, you just feel like you're younger until you see younger and you're like, oh, no, you guys are fucked. But like when I was 25, like I already had a full time job as a teacher that could have been a career. So in many ways, I'm like, yo, I know everything, man. Like I'm an adult. I know shit. I didn't know anything compared to now. You know, things were so different. But like the craziest thing was like almost everyone that I hired was like 22, 23, never had a job never worked like Monday to Friday at a real job, like something like teaching where I'm like responsible for 30 kids. So that was like the most grounding thing I had in my life. But like, I remember going to your house and like leaving and like looking through the raw footage with the team and everyone's just like, yo, when are we all getting houses with boats and cars and guns? And I'm like, yeah, slow down. No one's getting anything. <laughs> getting boats and cars. I'm first. And yeah. I don't see boats and cars in the next five years at least. <laughs> and I just remember like hanging out with you. It was just like, yo, he got money. He got money. <laughs> like We was, just had come back from a ridiculously uh, successful little like two-day film trip too. Like we had filmed for two, like we filmed for two days straight in Tennessee, um, filmed like four videos. Those four videos combined for like, I don't know, 70 million views or something like that. It was just like four like knock it out of the park kind of videos like the, like, the flamethrower and shit like that. And uh, we filmed all, it cost like $500 to film all four of those videos or something like that, minus ammo. And then we, we got two hours of sleep that night and then drove down to the airport and picked you guys up in, in fucking Atlanta and crammed all of Epic Meal Time, well, um, Harley, Muscles Glasses, and Tyler into the car and, uh, and plus White Boy 7th Street in the back seat, <laughs> in the back seat of, uh, of the truck. And then, and then Scott's in the front and the whole bed of the truck is full of watermelons. So like it's watermelons and guns, and so there there there's shits all over watermelons and guns. And I remember when we finally stopped at a gas station so everybody could take a piss. 
when they opened the back door, it, it was like spring opened like because they were jammed in there so tightly. <laughs> I felt so bad, but like I, didn't, I certainly didn't have like a cargo van to get everybody. No, but I, that that wouldn't even care about that. But like I just remember feeling so American. I'm like, you could just drive with like a bazooka in the back seat. Like no, you thing. can't. That was ridiculous <laughs> of me. Oh, I shouldn't have had that back there. I had my that law rocket launcher in the bed of the truck, in the open bed of the truck at the airport. And it's not illegal, but it looks what the real. Fuck I got me. It's thinking? just right here. I, I didn't know it was there. And it's not illegal. It just looks bad. It looks so bad. Yeah, you to don't bring drive a bazooka to an one. airport seat <laughs> yeah. in Georgia. She's where just everybody else has a chat. gun and is trying like, to be the hero. Sorry, officer. I didn't know my law rocket was back there. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Not only did I have my law, let me get my mic. Walking on. Around, oh, my God. I drank out of that thing. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Not only did I have this thing in the truck, but I had rounds for it in there, too. So, like, you know, I, uh, an argument can be made that I had some sort of rocket launcher, because I did, with rockets, because yeah, I did not, at the airport. It's not so much an argument. It's just a fact that you had armaments and rockets in your car at the airport. Um, you also pulled out a Desert Eagle and pointed it at the drive through um, Well, you know, there, there was – I don't think there's any law against that. I wasn't – I was uh, – Yeah, there was, was nobody there. It, just, just, just the you know the recording screen and everything. I, I, <laughs> well, I don't even think it was loaded. I remember like getting so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal. My goal was to like. I'm trying to play a character. I'm also like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my goal is to Amerishock you guys. That's what I try to do every time that like new people around. My day to day life isn't absurdly crazy like that. Of course, I'm just fucking with you guys because I think it's funny. When do you know Athene wins? Yeah. So that guy came over um, with his um, his girlfriend and another guy who was also like a YouTuber. Did I meet him with you? This is like he's like a World of Warcraft gamer, right? Or uh, Diablo or – Something like that. I honestly don't know. I, I know he's very successful at like uh, poker online and um, he's had like a r really successful um, like charity campaigns he's done. Um, uh, his girlfriend's like smoking hot and um, – I, she's some kind of like my, ran for some kind of minor league uh, political office in her country, and her her whole platform was like she'll give you a blowjob if you vote for her or something like that, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and it was him, and then like another YouTuber friend of his, and I, I don't recall that guy's name, but because it, it's been years, but they were complete Ameris shock. Like we took them to Walmart and showed them guns and stuff, and they're just like they have the guns at, at the Walmart, and these are the bullets. Look, these are bullets, and I'm like. They're shocked by the little pump shotgun they got here at Walmart. Where did they get to my house and see that it's literally like scattered with, with like high end military weaponry and shit? And sure enough, they're terrified. They're, they were just blown away by it. And my just standard size pickup truck, they called it a monster truck. They were like, <laughs> they were like, this is a monster truck. And I'm like, no, this is actually probably on the small size so uh, of like trucks on average. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is this is just a small truck really and it's it sits rather low, you know, and they're oh, this is a monster truck. Why do you need such a truck? Well, we, we got along okay and and me and Scott just both mostly avoided them because to be frank, she was very attractive and her breasts were all over the place and we're, you know, I've said this about Southern people before. We're polite people. We're not the rapey sort, unlike unlike those people who hiss at you on the beaches, uh, down in uh, down on Algeria the islands. Algeria or something. Those yeah. people. Um, so so we literally wanted to remove ourselves from the temptation of even staring at them because we felt it was inappropriate, disrespectful to this other guy because they were out there to be seen. They were and they were very nice. So mostly we didn't hang around, but the the, the time finally came to drive them home back to the airport. And so it's, I'm in the driver's seat, Kitty's in the passenger seat, she's got to always be in the passenger seat, or she gets sick, she says. And in the back seat, <laughs> in the back seat is Athene, his buddy on the other side, and this young lady is sitting right in the middle of the bench seat in the back. I was driving too aggressively, I'll admit. I was very familiar with the road, and probably overconfident, and I tried to pass when I shouldn't have in a curve. I saw my error, and I had a couple of options at this point. I can slam on the brakes and then try to get back in my lane, which is risky because there's always that chance the car that's alongside me will try to do the same thing and help me, and then, I get in some, and then I'm head on into a car. I don't want that. And so I decide to go to the left, go across. The, I'm already in the wrong lane, so let's continue in this direction where there are no other cars. I, I, and I let everybody know. I say, we're going off-road. Everyone hang on. And I said it just like that. And at about 60 miles an hour, we go down to the ditch. Ba-boom! 
up over the uh, over the like terse and we're like kind of sideways in a ditch now and then back up into the road and at some point the whole truck made like a huge lurching jump where it's just like whoa, whoa! and in the <laughs> rear view mirror i see this tiny little woman bounce straight fucking up and hit her head on the top of the the roof of my truck and it did some serious damage that she had to get <laughs> physical therapy for and like to this day i think they hold it against me oh are you serious so you basically like semi crippled there a little bit i don't know i i heard that there was a whole thing where you know physical like therapy disc. was quite I, ne a neck thing. I, I I don't know. I felt really bad about yeah, it. Yeah. Do you feel like a dick about it still? I well, she should have buckled up. This the lap belt. Oh, she there. wasn't buckled. She wasn't she buckled. She takes a bit of responsibility for that. That's for sure. how I feel. That's how and I. And you feel. did tell her to hold on, which means it's that the law. she should have been prepared for something. It I, is the law. I, I let everybody. Honestly, if I'm a thing, I gotta say, I put my arm around my girlfriend. I she her head doesn't hit the ceiling. I feel like there are many people that I could sort of cast this off on over myself yeah, and my, yeah, and really my reckless driving. I don't know why the moment. driver would be held responsible for this at all. I would not like to be held responsible in any way whatsoever. No, no, not at all. No. Do we need a new topic? Sure. All right. This is an Ask Reddit thing. I, we don't do these too much anymore. Without using a number, how old are you? So some of the sample answers from here are... Um, uh, I remember pre-internet, but not the wall coming down. Uh, another guy wrote, um, I remember in high school, we used to make fun of people for using the internet. Um, principal walked into my junior year English class to announce Kennedy's assassination. Mm. So without Can I just say like quarter century, neither of those are numbers. Nah, I don't like it. No, <laughs> I don't like it. Um, okay. landmark events. Yeah. Here's a guy debating between getting married and starting a family or doing drugs off a stripper's ass. That's how old he is. So, how old are you? I remember when South Park was animated poorly. I remember when The Simpsons was animated poorly. I had a Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, I, lo I loved fucking He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is the man. And um, I didn't see the wall come down. That's a great one. Uh, that, that really kind of puts it in there. And uh, I, I grew up with the internet. Yeah, I grew up with the internet. I was obsessed with Pokemon when that first came out. That was, I was in that first wave. Um... I was still young enough during 9-11 that I understood it was a really big deal, but obviously wasn't into politics since I was fifth grade. Um, Dial-up in dial up internet, that's a good one. Wow, a one family computer. Um, uh, yeah, you can't look at anything and all the porn. You like have to find one good image and then be so patient. And it's like It was never satisfying because you always knew that there were ten other way better images just waiting. But, but no, you, you get lazy and you think you hear can... somebody coming. I can remember downloading porn images and videos on like LimeWire or Kazaa, those, those, uh, those services, and you would get like 10% in, and you could watch a little preview, and I'd be like, nope, not going to cut it. And I'm like, dodged a bullet with that one. That was actually just a guy shitting all over the floor. That was not the, the cute uh, uh, teen yeah. anal or whatever I was actually Did you ever try like get really happy when you found like the video, like real video that you got to see a sample of? And it was like well, eight seconds of a chick like about to take her top off and like the beginning of a porn and that was it. And that was the only video you could get and you could like close out of your browser over and over and find new ones. But, but it was never satisfying. I, we'll, see, I, we'll see. I quickly found that in those days there was no free porn out there really unless you went to some like weird shady places that would just literally give you malware and viruses. So uh, I got all my – I remember one of them. I yeah. went to Kazaa and, and um, LimeWire and places like that and um, – like I said, the the problem with that was I would have to like everybody's got to go to sleep before I can use the family computer to download my porn. But then like using that dial-up internet connection, I've got to download for like three fucking hours to get enough porn to masturbate to properly. Like it's gonna take. I got to hunt for at least an hour, right? And then I finally figure out it's a like, part-time job. Then yeah. you, and then you have to hide it on your computer. No, that's the worst. I had to delete it every night. I had to delete oh every God. night. It was it, it was a, it was a vicious cycle. I didn't have a thumb drive. I didn't know about external hard drives. Every night I would I would spend hours downloading this master trove of porn, and I'd, I'd sometimes I'd memorize you know what to go back to so I could download it again. But it had to go at the end of the night. All the yeah, you find like the purged. Favorite. You didn't, you didn't have a good place to hide it. You, you didn't have like you know like uninteresting taxes 2014. Like some this was Kyle. Structure. What's going on in this tax folder? You're 11. I was, <laughs> why, why is it dated 2014? It's 1999. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. 
<laughs> it seems you're going crazy. Yeah. I, uh, I, I saw, uh, um, I think a good reference point for me is I, I remember very clearly uh, Undertaker's first walk into the wrestling ring. Um, I just started the seventh grade when like DX became like a big deal. Uh, when I was first old enough to know lyrics to songs and sing along, like Whoop There It Is was on the radio. Uh, I remember seeing like Space Jam was like the first movie I went to by myself with a friend with like no parents. Uh, yeah, and you know what? Like, I remember like 9 11, you know, also like I'm Canadian, and like I remember like, you know, sometimes there's just always some crazy shit going on in the USA. Remember, like, Oklahoma City bombing and stuff like that. And I remember going to the bathroom. I got up, and I was in the 11th grade, and or the 10th grade. And I got up, and I went to the bathroom. And then I came back from the bathroom, and it was all weird in the classroom, just, like, weird silence. And the teacher was like, um, a plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. And I was like, Okay. Now, I was 16, so when she said that to me, I was like, yeah, sounds bad, but doesn't bad shit always happen, you know? Like, doesn't bad shit always happen? So I'm like, what's so bad about this? And I didn't really take it in, and I sat back down, and the teacher was like, yeah, that's really crazy. Uh, does anyone not know what the World Trade Center is? And like half the kids put their hands up. The other half of that other half were probably lying. And um, she was like, yeah, and she's explaining it to us. And then another teacher comes in and says to the, to the teacher working, and then she looks at us and she's like, oh, my God, another plane just crashed. And then so now we're like, oh, wait, so before that was bad, but now this is weird? And then I remember, like, they brought a TV in and turned on the news, and we had CNN on, and, like, we're watching it, and you're watching these, like, extreme videos of, you know, the people and stuff like that. And that's when you start to go, oh, yo, this is really fucked up. And then one of the buildings came down. And then I remember the teacher and on the broadcast, I mean, they're like, okay, school's done. School's out. Uh, they let school, they let us all go home, which I thought was so weird at the time. I was like, wow, it's that bad that here in Montreal, Canada, we're going home for the rest of the day because of something that happened. Isn't weird shit happen in the world all the time? I didn't grasp it. I was so desensitized to violence and crazy shit and video game. Like it never processed that that was such a big deal until I got home and I saw all the extreme things on the news for weeks. And you know, I'm like, oh my God, that was so fucked up. How, do, how could I be so insensitive? And I think about it now is something I saw on Reddit not too long ago where there's someone said like, if like 9-11 happened today, the Vines, Snapchats and videos that people would have been uploading to Twitter would have been horrific and it's true like can you imagine the type of tweets of like people it's it's horrific to say but like just to think of like how much has changed in like the 15 years like people would be putting up videos their last words and uploading them to the internet like it's so fucking crazy how different things are from then until now and even just like how much like i didn't process it as a kid then and I was just too immature, you know, like a 16 year old boy is like, you know, what I mean, you wouldn't grasp that. When yeah. I was a little kid, um, this is like elementary school, you know, one through four. I was probably in fourth grade. We watched the first space shuttle take off. And to me, it, that was the tail end of when the world thought that like space exploration was a thing that applied. Like, you know, when we landed on the moon, which is before my time, it was like suddenly we were expanding our reach. Like our, our planet just got a little bigger, it included this other one. And then the space exploration became like more and more of a thing. They're sending satellites out further. We're seeing parts of the solar system and universe that we never saw before. And then when the space shuttle came, all of a sudden it was a space plane. Like we didn't think of it as a rocket at first. It was like, this thing can go up whenever it wants. It's just like a plane. It'll just take off, it'll land, it'll be cheap. We'll go up there all the time. And my father had this talk with me. I remember we were at Colonial Williamsburg and he was telling me not to colonize another planet. This was like a concern he had. He's like, all these people died. <laughs> you know, he's like, the, 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 the death rate of Williamsburg was terrible. 
Like you should not be one of those people where like 80% of the population gets wiped out as you're colonizing Mars. And then somewhere during my childhood, like between fourth grade and eighth grade or ninth grade, all of a sudden like Epcot got, they took all the space shit out and put cell phones in. Like you're going to be able to talk for anyone anywhere. You're going to be able to have um, like instant translation was the thing they were excited about. And for me, it was so disappointing. Was that was like, that new world order dumbing down humanity. That was that was one of the first steps right there. It, the, 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 like the dream was that you'd be able to communicate with someone in Japan, and the, yeah. the computer would just like translate it on the fly. I'm saddened that that, that space exploration isn't doesn't inspire more people. I, it, you know, if if you ask me like to name. 10 programs that I want to get, uh, you know, that I want funded, like NASA is going to be in there because I, I feel passionate about that. And every time they do something new, something cool, explore something, I'm like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. And that's us too. I like that it's America. I, when I hear about India doing a thing and China putting a rover on the moon, I'm like, fuck them and their fucking rover. We sent a bunch of dudes up there and they shit on that rock. Our shit's up there and it's staying there. And I don't want any Chinese shit on the moon. We need to get back up there and make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> so that... You want the Chinese shitting on your moon? <clears throat> no. I don't. Fuck I no. do not. It's an American moon. Little pellets clearly. everywhere. I don't see anyone else's pellets. flag on it. <laughs> Have you ever seen that thing um, where it's like... It, it's usually a what if scenario. It's like what if Trump ran NASA, and it's the American astronaut like planting his flag oh, like multiple times on different planets. Oh. Let me find this for you. I don't think <laughs> I've seen that. Um, so that was one thing of mine back when I was little. Space exploration and growing our like, like our grasp on the universe was still a thing. Um, shocks. I really got into the internet at my first job. Because they had a better connection. They had a one megabit download at work, and that was Ooh, amazing. Yeah, shit. a T one line. Wow. Yeah, with like two hundred oh, of know, us shared it, but it was amazing. I remember one little thing, and this is just you know those little like snapshots of memory where there's no story, there's no like you don't know anything else. You just remember like one weird moment. You know, I just remember at the kitchen table when I was like six or seven, like me and my family were sitting there eating, nobody was talking, and then my mom just said to my dad she's like oh did you hear that tupac died and he just went huh and she just <laughs> went oh never mind and that was that's it that was the whole thing but i guess that was when the day that tupac died <laughs> so there you go <laughs> when was that do you know What's your what, earliest September memory 27 1996 okay yeah so that, that was right on yeah. do you know your earliest memory taylor uh yeah when i was uh Two, uh, or no, maybe it was my third birthday, either my second or third birthday. Uh, I was obsessed with monkeys. Obsessed. Sorry, September 13th, 1996. Close. Okay, thank God. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, <laughs> hey, I did that for myself. <laughs> okay, then thanks for announcing it. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. the um, What was I saying? Fuck. Earliest memory. Oh, the monkeys. monkeys. The monkey, yeah. My second or third birthday, I was obsessed with monkeys. Loved them, and so my parents, to surprise me, ordered a, a monkey trainer with two small chimps, very young chimps, to come to my birthday party. Kirby and Kimmy. Somebody I think. comes from and wealth. Kirby, Carry on. the male, the male chimp, was super, super chill. He was cool. Uh, I got for my birthday this little like Kawasaki. It's like a four wheeler that's tiny and electric, and little kids can ride it around. <sighs> I would ride it around, and I let Kirby try it too, and I loved watching the monkey ride it. But Kimmy was a little fucking cunt. A little cunt. And she came over, and I was riding on it, and I just wanted to touch the monkey because I was obsessed with them. And she came over, and she just pushed me off the Kawasaki and took it. Just <laughs> rode off with it as the parents the were laughing. Ah, oh, look at the monkey. The monkey stole Taylor's present. Isn't that cute? And I'm like, I'm fucking three, and I can't defend myself against this jungle creature, you <laughs> assholes. It's my birthday today. <laughs> it is my birthday, one of the first few. You won't get this back, and you're laughing at me. Getting I'm not here for your amusement like those yeah. goddamn monkeys. <laughs> This thing could have tore my fucking fingers off, Mom and Dad. What were you thinking putting me next to a monkey? Like, <laughs> In a second, me... would have fucking pulled your teeth out of your face. Yeah, just for fun. Just to be like, I wonder what will happen if I've I do I've gone down this. some internet rabbit holes, man. I've gone in on monkey attacks. Oh, Far. I have gone in on monkeys. I, I've watched every most monkey videos out there. They're still so interesting. But, yeah, that was my first memory, is being pushed off that Kawasaki and looking back at that little monkey wearing the pink dress, so it was, like, all dressed up like a, a kid, and then just driving away. 
Holy I shit! Did. That is an, that is going to be obviously the best first memory out of all of us. It, yeah, I, I, I don't think we should continue. I don't even. I can't even. <laughs> it's my first. First, like I don't know how you do that. Like like how. When you're three or four, like how how well is your timeline based anyway? Like I I don't know the time. I can't think of. I can't put the timeline together from those years. Like, what what it is what with me is I feel like my earliest memories. I'm not sure if they're real if they're implanted. Like I kind of remember looking up out of a crib or something, but I could have just implanted that. One that I know is real is it was a, it was Christmas Eve and I was probably three ish or something, and the Christmas tree was next to the couch, so you could stand on the arm of the couch and reach fairly high on the Christmas tree. And uh, I was reaching for like, I don't know if it was the angel on top or some ornament on it or something, but I got to it. And as I pulled it, I noticed that the tree was coming down and my three-year-old dumbass mind thought, Ooh, this has potential. So I kept pulling on it and I yanked the tree over until it fell on the ground and broke a bunch of the ornaments and caused a big clatter. And I was very pleased with myself. Mm. And you didn't even get in trouble because you're so young, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they were just disappointed at the situation. You know, <laughs> like, like, ah, yeah, what are you going to blame the three year old? So. Um, can we watch this jockey commercial? It was the one I was talking about with, like, um, you know, the planting the flag and everything. I, I love this look. It's 30 seconds. It's great. All right. Is everyone queued up at zero? Yeah. One moment. Make sure this is good. All right. Ready, set, play. Jockey has supported legends like General Patton, Babe Ruth, and Buzz Aldrin, who went to the moon. But imagine if Buzz had worn today's jockey underwear. He would have planted the flag on all the planets. You're not mankind. <laughs> America dips on the entire Milky Way. That's because Jockey is quality crafted to last longer. Guaranteed. Now I gotta say, jockey me undies supports greatness. your cock much better than those jockeys. They, they're, they're, their slogan may be supporting greatness, but eh, I don't see it there. The, my me undies really present Dave Thomas down there in a way that's pleasing to the eye. Um, both Dave from Thomas. above. Yes. Who's Dave Thomas? That's my penis. Uh, wh wh what's the what's the inception of Dave Thomas? Um, open late. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're open late and it's always great. Uh, I, don't know. I don't fucking know. We got free frost. Tri triple meat. Yeah. <laughs> well played, Harley. Make any connection you want to make there. Uh, but but uh, I, I think Woody and I have talked about this. <laughs> penis really does look nice in the in those me undies. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's pleasing to the eye. I like the look of it. Uh, it really is no it joke. Like you, you might wow. consider yourself a guy with an average size package, but in me undies, you have a super size package. It is it is presented in such a way that uh, no one in their right mind would turn it down. All right, so now we have to undo the, the video. Yeah, just click yeah. your video button. Click your video thing. It'll take a while, but it'll happen. You know, as hosts, we get sent a lot of stuff all the time, and sometimes it's a hit, other times not so much. Well, Movement sent us some watches the other day, and I have to say these things are totally a hit. It's like when you get something new and everybody at work is always asking where you got it. Um, I've got the classic black one. That's that's the one I ordered. Uh, movement watches were founded with an, on the idea that stylus watches – don't have to be expensive. By selling online, they're able to cut out the middleman and give you the best possible price. Movement watches start at just $95. Uh, at a department store, you're looking at four to $500 for a watch like that. You'll, get, uh, you'll look sharp at the office or going out at night, um, and there are no hassles. Just order online with free shipping, uh, free returns, and a 24-month warranty. So join the movement by saying no to big, br uh, big brand retail markups. Go to MVMT Watches. Uh, dot com slash pka today and they'll give you 15 percent off your entire purchase mvmtwatches.com slash pka they really do look nice i prior to getting my movement watch i guess that's how you use mvmt um i bought these cheap timex ones thinking that's all i need i'm a timex kind of guy and then i got the good one and i was like oh i take it back this movement yeah. one is so much nicer like the, yeah i like my watch it, it like the the weight to it that's way way better what have you been doing in your spare oh colin's foot let's talk about that is it did he get the boot off or is that he, coming he got the boot off yesterday um i'm he's still limping and walking funny and stuff I, so harley you may not know about six weeks ago nearly exactly six weeks ago my son and i were splitting wood in the backyard 
And, uh, you know, I had the grown up size axe and he had like the smaller axe and we're there and we're both splitting wood and things are good, dead and calling. And when I was his age, I was splitting wood and flip flops. So I thought, you know, he was okay. And he had work work boots on and stuff. It's true. And, uh, um, anyway, he missed the log and, or he just chipped it or something and it went into the top of his foot and the axe split three tendons on the top of his foot so you know this this sort of five toes the middle three he lost the ability to use them uh they could go down but they they couldn't like stay straight or anything like that so we had that surgically repaired the next day and uh, it looks like he's gonna be all right he may have a little numbness and his foot turns a little purplish or something but that should go away too and um yesterday for the first time he got out of his like big protective boot um it it made it so that he couldn't move his toes he couldn't move his ankle you know he just sort of clotted around he could walk but now he's in a regular shoe and i think he doesn't have flexibility in it like he really can't do this very well with his toes but um that will come he's 12 uh he just got out of the boot yesterday and uh he's yeah, so he's getting around with a regular shoe on. Tends to wear a soccer shoe. Hmm. And that is cool. I like it off because, to me, that boot was a monument to bad parenting. It, it's just like like I've really and, held and myself responsible. And now that it's off, you guys can move on to your ninja sword classes like you'd intended. Yeah, of course. You got your katanas. You got daddy katana and the child size <laughs> katana. Razor sharp, of course. I have a question. Um, first of all, I'm glad to hear that he's healing, healing well and that's coming together. But I need to know because is that bad parenting? Like at what age do you give the kid the axe then and let him hit the wood? But I'm genuinely asking because I come from a Jewish family where at like, I'm 30 years old, my door could open up right now and my mom will walk in this house and start doing my laundry. So it's like the opposite of that. I can almost say that that's bad parenting on the other end of the spectrum. If I took an ax now at 30 years old, she'd be like, Harley, put that down, you're gonna hurt yourself. (laughs) So I wanna know like at what, when would you, when is the the age that, that you give the kid the axe? It's hard to you know say. I mean? So I was 10 when I started working my first axe. Uh, I was a Boy Scout. That's when I joined at like 10 and a half. And they taught us to chop wood. They taught us to, taught us to use a knife, stuff like that. Like that was actually the main reason I joined the Boy Scouts. Like because I could start using edged cool shit. And, um, you know, we would take down trees and chop them and make firewood and do stuff like that. And uh, they taught us how to whittle, make little spears or whatever, carve soap. And um, so I was 10. Colin has special needs. (laughs) But, like, it's not like he's dumb or anything. It just takes him... Sometimes he doesn't always get your message, right? Because they call it his... What kind of special needs? His... um, so he's on the autism spectrum and he has trouble with his res- receptive and expressive language. Right. So, okay. um, uh, but it's not like he can't learn like his math. No, of course. Uh, you know, I used to be a, I was an integration <clears throat> for about five years actually. Okay. So as an example, his math is getting good enough that my wife wants me to take it over because her math is not good enough. He's homeschooled uh, to teach him anymore. So she's, she's stepping up to the better math person in the family. Uh, but his reading is more delayed and, you know, it, it, on a side note, disciplining him is always hard because it's hard to pin down like, well, maybe he just didn't understand this rule or maybe he's just fucking with you and pretending he didn't understand this rule. And um, so when you teach him how to work an axe or something, you're like, eh, you know, like is, m- maybe it doesn't lock in the same way. But he didn't do anything wrong. He did exactly what I told him to. He just made a mistake and, uh, and missed the wood. And, it, you know, the, the motion just went right past the log and into his foot. So uh, um, when's the right time? I don't know. For me, it was 10. I thought 12 was okay with him. but I got a handgun at 4. Uh, and no, don't sweat it. Uh, I, yeah, mean, I, I got my first gun when I was like 6, maybe. So I think that's fine. Yeah. I think it's okay. I, I, oh, that video scores posted. You, you commented on with, uh, I don't know, if it, I think maybe somebody posted on the, uh, the PKA Reddit. Where the guy was chopping wood differently, right? Where that like that's a crazy Russian hacker or whatever, <laughs> where he just finds bad ways to do easy tasks. Oh, I like him. Uh, He's a nice guy. That is the worst. 
there, you know why people don't fucking chop wood like that? Because no, I if don't. you don't have an Can... axe that's razor sharp that he just bought with his fresh YouTube money, then you're going to hit that thing with a dull cudgel, and it's going to flip at your face, and you're going to look like a goddamn retard when it hits you right in the nose and breaks it. That You put too small of a log there, you look like an asshole when you hit it and just foo, 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 right into your face. That I wanted that to happen in that video so bad, but of course it didn't because he... He bought a brand new axe because he doesn't actually chop wood because this isn't a real trick because nobody – oh, my God. It's so fucking stupid, that whole channel. I went through and watched like five different videos teaching me how to open a container of crayons better. It's like, my God, how many people are struggling so much with these problems <laughs> that they need to look it up? Isn't it easier to just do it the long way instead of searching on YouTube to find someone who can help I like that guy. Problem? He's a nice guy. <laughs> do you know I'm him sure at he's all? a nice guy. Like a little, yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm we, sure we he's a nice – you know, you know all the Russians, and I'm sure he's a very nice guy. But I mean, you, to, to tell me to eat an apple from top to bottom and doing all these. You showed me how to things. take my shirt off with one hand. You just yeah. All <laughs> the times you need that skill, you know. <laughs> what if I'm injured? My lefty, my left one's down. So, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, shucks. Now that I didn't think about it, but Taylor's right. I can imagine a scenario where you hit the log and it starts flipping toward you instead of splitting. I don't know. I think what we're gonna do now is I have a hydraulic log splitter. He works the lever. I put the logs in place. We're a team. That's where we're going to go. Oh, I want to show you his boots. Can, yeah, I, show the boots. I'll be yeah, right back. Badass. Boots are badass. And real quick, as a caveat, I don't know the Russian hacker guy. I just thought a couple of the videos I watched were silly. I feel Fair a little enough. bit bad now if he's a really nice guy. He is a real nice guy. He's okay, got a nice... Okay, well, I feel uh, bad. But yeah. it's, um, it's silly. We, I've silly. talked to him a few times about, about collaborating some way, but it's kind of hard to come up with something that's it's interesting and fits both our little genres. He's got a cool high-speed camera that I thought we could utilize. Do you, uh, do you, when you watch his videos, though, do you ever feel like you can tell when you're really stretching to try and, like, make a tip? I mean, he's, he makes a lot of content, right? So, I mean, how, <laughs> ma how many amazing things are you going to come up with a week, right? So, I mean, some of them are just like, oh, nifty. Ch check but this some out. Some are innovative and cool. So, so I don't know anything about... Like, I'm not a doctor, but like the doctor of common sense says, well, shucks, like if something were to happen to these tendons now, it might be more difficult to repair them. You know, like there's two cuts in there. You got a bigger fucking mess than, than you like originally would have, or maybe they're weak or whatever. So I wanted to get him good boots. These boots have a metatarsal guard on them. They're for fucking like, they're for welders who might have like molten steel hit them or they're for lumberjacks. It's chainsaw proof. It's like carbon fiber or something or other that goes Ah, oh, maybe you should step him up to the chainsaw. <laughs> they make those in child size. So it's steel toed and then it has this like carbon fiber metatarsal guard on looks it. Looks like a Skechers. Uh, yeah. It's um. It looks like a it's death the metal S. boot. Yeah. It's yeah, Timberland. It's so um, yeah, these aren't sponsored or anything, but it just, uh, it, it just should take, it should make his foot safe. This is Can a, you do something uh, <clears throat> to dramatize the intensity of that protective shield, maybe with like a bat or a stick or something bladed? Shit. Just so we can really know that he's going to be safe. I have like Ooh, the weakest shit around press. here. I want to be like... <laughs> <laughs> It'll resist plastic camera cases all day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even think about dropping your reading glasses you on these. Will it take a 22? <laughs> a Will 22? it take a 22 round? That's the question. I, th I think it might. I think it might. It's. I don't. Do you think it would, Kyle? You think it would punch right through? Yeah, I think it'd shoot out the bottom of it. I, I saw a spoon block a 22. I call. I, yeah. A spoon makes sense spoon. though, because it's. If you had a high curved, quality spoon, right? sure. It's going to immediately deflect all that energy off to the side, right? But Kyle, you think a 22 penetrates this? Yeah. I think there's steel in it. I, it's not going through any, through any significant amount of steel now. Um, this shit is like... Well, but, but just because it's Kevlar doesn't mean it's necessarily like the ballistic mesh Kevlar. I think there's something special about the way they weave that stuff when they're going for a bulletproof application. I'm no expert, but I've worked with body armor. I really armor. wish I had something more significant Bro. to hit it with. Like... <laughs> Hydraulic pressed it. <laughs> that's what you got to oh, do. That's a, that's a good call. I, 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 I want to start a Kickstarter campaign to make Taylor the host of his own Hydraulic Press channel. Let's get that Finnish guy at it. America should be leading the charge yes. in the Hydraulic Press YouTube game. There shouldn't be some Finnish guy out there crushing shit better than we can crush shit. No. Let's, let's get a Kickstarter going, get Taylor enough money to get him a Hydraulic Press, 
and he'll do uh, like character voices for for the press every week. He'll dress the press up the, as a Mexican one week, and he'll be Senor Crushenstein or something. Very and, offensive. Very offensive. And, <laughs> yeah, he'll crush some like Mexican shit or whatever, and and you know just do a different stereotype every week and. But crush big stuff, bigger than this other guy could ever crush. This what? guy, we'd be crushing things that this guy would look at and say, well, that can't be crushed. But we look <laughs> at it and say, that can certainly be crushed, sir. You, you just don't have the equipment. Yes, That's how the conversation exactly. Go. Like, I don't know what he's got. Let's say he's got a 100-ton press. We get a 150-ton press. I've heard that. He's they got call that the starter press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, got told, <laughs> I think I told you the other night, like, like um, one of my... Training press. <laughs> like, my... My dad's tractor, his front end loader is, it, I think it was like forty-five to fifty-five thousand dollars. It's somewhere in that price range, and I consider that a high-dollar piece of fucking machinery. Um, it's it's the kind of piece of it's the kind of piece of machinery that when you do that, you're like, well, this is a kind of a lifetime investment, especially for yeah. my dad. Um, his neighbor came over and saw it, went, ah, oh, that's a nice starter tractor you've got there, because this guy's got like four million dollars worth of John Deere stuff. He replaces combines every year. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, like he's got he's got fifteen antique tractors that he because he collects those. Like, so he sees my dad's little tractor. Oh, nice starter tractor you got there. So the same thing could apply both ways, I guess. Well, one of the things about yeah, antique and we tractors, would be able to talk down to him. it implies storage. Now, what if we got one of those shredders? Are you familiar Ooh, with the shredders? What, what could we shred? Oh, the ones with, it looks like with the you with could the shred like thirty. Those are so mesmerizing. By the way, thirty-two bowling those balls, ones that maybe eat the fridges yeah. and shit. And uh -huh. the and tires. Bicycles, tires, tires bowling yeah. balls, bowling pins. Uh, we could buy like six hundred old pool cue ball things. We put cow. We put a whole cow in there. We put yeah. expensives in there. We put one cow. That sounds like something the Finnish guy would do. <laughs> we put put a bunch of baby. Yeah, cows. that machine that destroys everything. I love it. Yeah, it's so mesmerizing. There's I like seeing it do the tires, like when you just throw a tire in there, because it does like the bounce initially, and then somehow it just Look, gra just latches on. All I'm up. saying so here neat. is that I'm watching for, this right now. for far less than what the fans put up out there for Wings of Redemption's weight loss, which I think uh, came to like eleven thousand dollars that we raised for Wings weight loss. Um, I, I feel like we could, we could, you know, for like five grand, these presses are something like that. I think this would be hilarious. I, I think this would be so fucking funny. I want to see Taylor as the host of this thing, like being really upbeat and perky and like with a handheld mic, like one of those long, thin ones that comes up. He's like, oh, like some ah, host in the 70s. Press show, <laughs> the real one. <laughs> There's some other hydraulic press shows out there. You know, those 10 ton boys. Well, let me show you the Benford Crushomatic Motherfucker 1000. <laughs> 175 tons of crushing, smushing, mushing power. Let's throw some shit I, in there. And you throw big shit. I want shit really in. bad like G-rated puns as well. And I want to have bad kind of like star sweep transitions when I'm like, today we're going to be destroying some, you know, coffee cans right this way. And it goes like, shh. <laughs> and then it's me standing right next to it again. And it just looks fucking horrible. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's bad. Ed like I like Tim and Eric style editing where like after I'm phased back in, there's like a... <laughs> like it's a little bit shitty. I love. I think that is. I don't know why. I think that style of humor is so funny. When and, Tim and you Chris look, and stuff like that. you with the beard, you look just a little bit like Billy Mays. So I feel like if you did a Billy Mays character and put on the blue shirt and khakis and hey, <laughs> Billy Mays here with an Billy amazing Mays here, gonna break some Chris cocaine out and crush some stuff. <laughs> I, I, I overdosed six years ago. My family I, resents me. You know? I'll take the hundred dollars I win from Chiz on this election bet and put it right into that Kickstarter campaign. Thank you. Yeah, Kickstarter. What is the bet? To, uh, uh, it's get twenty thousand dollars. His delegate number. If Trump hits his delegate number, I get a hundred bucks. Uh, Interesting. Don't know. So Chiz is still betting on. Oh uh, yeah, he has to win the nomination. Yeah, he's going to win the nomination. Uh, oh, oh that's easier than getting president. his delegate number, kind of. Like um, he, no, if he got the delegate number, he would be guaranteed to be. They're, they're, they're kind of one and the same. Well, he could get it on, like, the second vote or something like that. Like, yeah, that's true. But I bet that he would get the delegates. That is the, that, that's the bet. And that's what I think is going to happen. Oh, like, bet that yeah, he would be the me. We bet, I bet that he would get the, the delegates. Um, this is all very boring for, you, for, for probably everybody. We, we've hit, hit on this forever. But, yeah, he need, Trump needs to get 58% of the remaining delegates at play. However, New York is coming up next. It's winner take all. Uh, then a bunch of little states. I think Trump takes, is probably going to take it, one or two of the next ones that are kind of winner take most. But then California comes up and cruises Bible Belt, Tea Party, 
super anti-woman, but for real, not just the propaganda they spread against Trump, anti-woman bullshit, ain't gonna play well in California. Trump is the guy who allowed transgender to be in Miss Universe. Trump is the guy who's got African-American women leading his company. Trump is the guy who had a woman build Trump Towers. Like, He's incredibly liberal in his track record as yeah. far as hiring practices. Yeah, this guy, I mean, I, I feel like Trump is a real... Uh, but I don't feel like he did that because... They were, I don't think he did that where he was like, oh, black lady. Yeah, throw her in charge. I'll need her as ammunition later in life. Like, no, I don't think so. I think that he's a businessman at heart, and that when he was doing that, he's like, that the job. black lady is the best person for the job. Fuck everybody else. You go do that, you know? Yeah, I think that's the case. Um, but, yeah, that's our bet we've got. I, I, I hope I win it. Um, we'll see. At the um, risk of uh, doing too much politics, did, did you guys see the interview where he said women should be punished for abortion? Yeah, he's been a he's no. being a bit misquoted. He took that back right away, didn't he? Two hours what? the next day. Two hours later. Two and, hours. Yeah, and they're That's still serious. nailing him to the wall for it. And he was so like cornered into saying that. I, I've got the video. It's a minute and a half long. Do you guys want to see I'll it? Watch. Yeah, let's watch it. Yeah. I think it's only fair to watch videos like this because you hear labels put on people, and it's it's important to actually see why they're calling him that. Because like you can hate Trump because of his policies or because he's unqualified or whatever, but you shouldn't hate him because of some idea that you have of him that this is not quite true if you look at the evidence let's watch this watch him so let me preface it before we press play together to me i felt like he just didn't know the answer right he hasn't been pro-life his entire life and they were like just started pressing and pressing him what do you do you punish the woman do you punish the woman do you punish the woman i think if he had known that like oh no the typical answer on this is you punish the doctor the woman's a victim he would have immediately jumped on that um he just didn't really know what to say about it so ready set play and donald trump should the woman be punished for having an abortion uh look uh, this is not something you can dodge if, if you say like, abortion not, is a not, crime or abortion is murder you have to deal with it under the law should abortion be punished well people in certain parts of the republican party and conservative republicans would say yes they should be punished. how about you I would say that it's a very serious problem, and it's a problem that we have to decide on. Uh, it's, it's very hard. But you're I mean, for banning you it. Say, well, wait, are you going to say put them in jail? Are you, is that well, the what I'm asking you? About? Because you say you want to ban it. What's I, that I mean? Would, I am against, I am pro-life, yes. What is ban? How do you ban abortion? How do you actually do it? Well, you know, you'll go back to a, a position like they had, where people will perhaps go to illegal places, yeah. but you have to ban it. I'm you ban it and they go to somebody who, who flunked out of medical are school. Are you Catholic? Yes, I think I... I and how do you feel about the Catholic Church's well, position? I accept the teaching authority of my church on moral issues. But do you know their position on abortion? Yes, I do. And do you concur with that position? I concur with their moral position, but legally I, know, I get but, to the but, question. Here's my problem no, with no, it. No, no, but let me ask you, but what do you say about... It's not funny. Your church. Yeah, it's really not a funny thing. What do you say about your church? They're very, very strong. They're allowed to, but the churches make their moral judgments, but you you running for president of the United States will be chief of executive of the United States. Do you believe no, but, in but do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no? Is a principle. Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment for the woman. Yeah, there has to be some form. Ten no, cents, ten tell years. You, I don't what? know. That I don't know. That well, why I don't not? Know. I don't you know. You take positions and everything else. I frankly, I do take positions and everything else. It's a very complicated position. And and Don yeah, he's really backed in the corner there. I don't, yeah. I don't know what they, answer to. Give. They really cornered him into saying, like, hey, if it's bannable, if you're banning it, how do you do it? Do you yeah. punish the woman? If you're banning it, how are you doing it? Punish the woman? I want to know what it is. How are you going to do it? If you're going to ban it, are you going to punish the woman? Are you going to punish the woman? Are you going to ban it? If you ban it, you got to punish the woman. And he's doing everything he can not to punish the, the woman. And, and the deal is, this is just a guy that hasn't been in politics for a decade. You know, he's kind of been in politics because real estate is politics, but certainly not this thing. And he just didn't know... Like, you know, he, he had never seen the answer key on this question I expected before. that to be way more over-the-top crazy based on what I've heard people say. That's exactly. what all these Trump things have been, is yeah. every time someone's like, did you hear what he said, like, two days ago here? He said, you know, Mexicans don't even deserve to be in Mexico. That they should leave <laughs> there and go to Honduras and sit in Honduras. He said, you know? he said all of them are so close, it's disgusting that they're breathing the white people air and that they need to leave. <laughs> Did you believe that? And then you go and listen to it, and they're like, so you do want to get rid of illegal immigrants? It's like, well, you know, I think that's a very strong position, and I stand by it. It's like, well, what? Like, even this, he, I thought this was going to be a thing where he was like, women need to be punished for this. It's out of control. Like, we need, like, no, not even at all. They had to pull, they were pulling teeth to get and, that answer. And, and Harley, I know you, you know what? I got to say something. I got to say something. Too bad. Like, you're the president of the United States. 
like the most powerful man on earth, you like you can't really fuck anything up like that on a show. Like you can't be like, oh, like he he pulled my teeth and made me give that answer. Like I just watched this thing the other day. It was this awkward moment, and I think it was like uh, I'm gonna mess up who the guy was, but. What happened was the guy shook Obama's hand. Um, I don't remember the context. And I, he shook Obama's hand and then he grabbed Obama's other arm and like tried to lift it up with him like this. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that. And Obama, like his arm was loose. Yeah, like lift. And it hung there. <laughs> yes. And, I'll thank, you. It. <laughs> thank you. It's an awkward looking thing. But that awkward looking limp arm is the exact opposite of having your teeth pulled and giving a shitty answer. Because you get your teeth pulled by like another world leader and you get like the photo snapped or the video taken and like the wrong type of answer by getting your teeth pulled is a fucking war or fucking dead people or you know what I mean? Like you're like president of the United States, like you gotta have a fucking serious brain on your head and you gotta always be on your A game and you can't be spray tan just off the cuff killing it. You wanna entertain the masses, cause fine, you'll you'll entertain your own people. But then like think about sending Trump to another country to shake hands with another world leader, how delicate that process is. And like I just like I was watching this thing like like Obama's limp arm. And I was like, God damn, president of the United States. Like there's so many little mind games that take place there. Like I watched this one video where it looks ridiculous. It's two like Arabic leaders pushing each other through a door. Yeah. And you don't know what the fuck that is. You're like, what are they doing? They're being so silly. No, there's like this like system of the superior goes last. So these two guys who thought they were on they were on the same level, one thought that they were greater than the other, were trying to push the other one through the door to go through the door second, and it kind of looked ridiculous. But like, part of being president is knowing, like, what can be thrown at you, and what you can and can't say. And if they ask it like this, or they do it like that, or every little thing, like you got to navigate such a delicate path that if you're going to go on there and be like, yeah, women should be punished for abortion. Uh, you made me say that. It's like too fucking bad, man. You're the fucking president. You don't ever say that shit. You always got to be on your A game. You always. I just don't feel like. Yeah, you can't get away with it. I don't know. Like I, you, you can't just write. It I agree with that. Like, That's no big deal. But at the same time, like, I am just saying that I don't like the whole sensational. Everything is dramatized with him more than anyone is. Just everything he says, even if it's not totally out there crazy, it's so, it has to be I mean, crazy. I mean, shit, I watched Ted Cruz eat a booger on national t television live. I did you too. want to talk about some unpresidential <laughs> shit? He ate a booger. I watched it. The booger lands on his top lip. He continues to speak. It, it <laughs> transmutates to the bottom lip. And then at some point, he fucking Zodiac Killer That's ate that sustenance. motherfucker. Extent I beat you to the punch, Jiz. American politics knowledge is fucking all in stupid internet video bits. Literally, that's everything I can gather because, like, I'm not big into politics. There's you know, real shit know, about Hillary. Hillary. Like, Hillary's the one who voted uh, for the Iraq war. 200 yeah. dead civilians of it. She made that decision. She looked at the evidence, weighed it, uh, looked at everything and said, yeah, let's, let's go ahead with that. She's the one who referred to Iraq, uh, you know, mid-war, mid-meltdown as a great American business opportunity. That's how we should look at this. She's, you know. And, she and meanwhile, Trump did some smart stuff, right? I remember back when, um, I remember them saying, hey, look, they just spent like $10 million on advertising for the Iraq war. This is Bush did it. And they asked Trump what he thought. And he's like, you know, it's not that crazy. He's like, I would spend $100 million. I'd spend $100 million telling everyone how we just won, and I'd bring the troops home. And this was in, like, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. That sounds pretty smart in retrospect. Go just say, yeah, we won the war. Congratulations. Plant a flag. Get the fuck out. Because what happens when we stayed there? Like, nothing great has happened. ISIS well, took over Al-Qaeda. We should have propped up any fucking government that would have stood made them sign some ridiculously uneven agreement for their oil and gotten the fuck back out of there. And if yeah. they needed money to keep the masses in line, we should have pumped it to them. And, and Harley's right in that, like, the president can say something and it moves markets, right? The president says the wrong thing. S&P 500 drops 300 points. You know, that, that's, that's not good. And Trump is likely to make a mistake like that. But the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to try an outsider or not? 
right? There is nobody who hasn't spent all this time in politics who's never going to be stumped during questions like this. It, is it important that the person has had, you know, 15 years versus worth of political breeding? Or do you actually want to try something different? I don't know the answer. I'm not. You know, I sound pro Trump, but I'm, I'm really not. Um, I just I'm intrigued by the idea yeah. of trying something new. I know Hillary, what you so mean. So Hillary Clinton's only been elected to one office, right? Her, her Senate seat. During that time in office, she sponsored, you know, they always talk about Sanders and his failed tenure and, and how, oh, how many, how many bills has he sponsored that actually went through and did a thing? Well, Hillary did sponsor three that came through. She renamed a post office. She named a historical landmark, I think. And she named a street, I think, and the naming of something else. That was her entire contribution um, as far as bills proposed and, and passed into law during her tenure. Other than that, she was selected to be a Secretary of State by Obama because, you know, he needed her to make sure he beat the GOP. And then he, she married Bill Clinton. Um, well, that, that, she has more experience than just her time in the Senate. I think that's incorrect to say, right? Like, I remember when Bill Clinton was running back in 1991, 92, he was saying, hey, you vote for me, you get two presidents for the price of one, right? That was a thing. That was a platform that he ran on. Uh, and then, you know, he handed so, her like open, going off Mich Slick Willie's word. Michelle said, Obama is leading like fitness in schools or better diets for kids or something like that. And that's fine. Now, I'm not knocking her. I love Michelle Obama. But Hillary Clinton was leading, you know, the health care effort. She, she tried to do, failed, what was Obama's signature bill, Obamacare. Um, she was different, but that's, that was the type of initiative she took on. She was not just a first lady. She was a, I don't, know, I don't want to say co-leader, that she wasn't co-president. Do you think they have a marriage of convenience? Now they do, yeah. Hmm. Chiz, this graphic that you just linked shows that proportionally they're pretty much the same. God damn it, Chiz, get better propaganda. <laughs> it says, um, who gets things done better? Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton? Congressional mm -hmm. bills introduced. Bernie Sanders, 5,300 because he's father time. Hillary Clinton, 2,100. <laughs> and then it's just like, look how much smaller the number is on Hillary's side. Look how much bigger it is on Bernie's. It's like, it, these are proportionally very similar. I don't know. That's not like a, that's what's like not convincing about so many of the Bernie arguments is that you feel like, the arguments aren't there because so much of what you l find when you are researching about him is like minutia comparing him versus other candidates, like small little charts like that, that really don't mean much, you know? So what you see the, who gets things done. Maybe I'm just miss oh, I'm I'm looking at it incorrectly, but it doesn't, if anything, it looks like Hillary Clinton has a much higher percentage of her bills that were considered that eventually made it to law. So, I mean, you, if they were, businesses competing, Hillary could put this exact same graphic out there and go, ah, but when you actually analyze the data, see this? I'm more efficient. Did you like, see that the DEA is going to rule uh, in the first half of this year to uh, on whether or not to reschedule marijuana? No, I didn't I, I see didn't that. that. There is going to be a DEA uh, ruling as to whether they should or should not reschedule marijuana. It's currently a type one. You know, when right is that? Within the net, within the first six months of this year, they said so. Wow. In six less than sixty days. Yeah. That so that would be really awesome. They could so many states would be start just making money hand over fist. Maybe um, uh, that would be great. I, I feel like it. You know, I, I don't want to go into and beat the 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 legalized weed dead horse because it's been done a thousand times, and I feel like anybody who's even interested in it knows that it's a good idea. You know, because. From incarceration rates to to the tax savings to putting the cartel out of business to putting terrors, terror to stop funneling money to terrorists, um, you know, um, the fa all those things are, are, are make it a good idea. Um, so let's hope it happens. Yeah. Well, Sanders introduced that one, Chiz. Well, then there you go. Excellent bill, Sanders. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So I, uh, schedule one, I think schedule one's the worst, right? Oh, and it isn't like heroin schedule two. Her heroin so and L no, no, heroin is one, so is LSD. Um, I, I saw today that Giuliani endorsed Trump, by the way. Giuliani said he's voting Trump. He didn't uh, endorse him, actually. I think he specifically said, I'm voting for him, but I'm I won't endorse him. him. Fair enough. Okay, okay. Yeah. What does uh, that mean? I don't What's know. the difference there? <laughs> it's pretty uh, it's plausible subtle. deniability. I think it means, <laughs> yeah. he didn't endorse it, him. It means that he's... He's anti Cruz more than anything, and he's and he's really anti Hillary more than anything. He thinks Trump can beat Hillary, and he doesn't want Hillary to win. But he's not necessarily standing behind anything that Trump is for. I, uh, how does anyone vote Trump? Like it's so insane to me. Really? What is? 
Like, just, it's not that he's great, it's the competition. It's the competition. Do you, do you yeah, like but Cruiser that's always Casey the Ford? rule. I understand that's always the rule. That, like, you know, you're just picking the least worst, but I don't like... He's the how... least worst for us. Yeah, to a lot of people, he's the least worst. I've never had an election where I dislike the candidates as much as I do this year. And I'm yeah. old, you know? Like, when Clinton ran... I actually never voted for Clinton. I voted for Ross Perot twice. What's wrong with Sanders? I don't... I never really hear bad things about him except the socialist thing. You yeah, won't the hear them thing. in certain parts of the internet at all. Um, he's... Uh, Online, you won't hear it at all. Yeah, no, you, right. you just won't. I, I, I'm just not down to be a democratic socialist. I, I, I'm, I'm on the other end of the spectrum as far as that goes. I, I, I'm definitely a capitalist, first and foremost. I, I feel like that's the best political system that we have out there right now. Um, I don't think the others work. And uh, not to say that capitalism is perfect by any means. I just think it's the best. Just like Trump is the best of the candidates I have to choose from, capitalism is the best of the, of the systems that I have to choose from. Um, and it, it, I feel like it's the one where the cream rises to the top, where the, the hardworking succeed and prosper, and, and where the lazy sometimes get what they fucking deserve instead of a handout. Um, that's just kind of how I feel about that. I think thing. that if you give a handout to a lazy person, then that person never stops being lazy. I think that if you have a $15 minimum wage, that those jobs will either be shipped overseas or automated. I think that if you do a minimum salary, which I hear people talking about, I don't know if it's part of his platform, that uh, there will be a fair amount of people who say, you know what, I'm cool with that. Um, Bernie Sanders himself, it makes me uncomfortable that he didn't draw a steady cha paycheck until he was in his 40s. And even then, it was a government paycheck. Like, uh, and, and to this day, he's, he's worth $300,000 net. Wait, he didn't draw a steady paycheck until he was in his 40s? That's right. That's when he got his first job. Or first steady what? job. Wait, whoa, 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 wait, what? what? 40 years old before he had a job? And he's running for president and people are voting for him? Look it up. He didn't have a job until he was 40. That can't be true. He that, had I, jobs, but they were like odd jobs and contractor jobs and... You know, no, steady paycheck is what we're talking about. He was a conscientious, conscientious objector in Vietnam, which say what you will about that. But I mean, I, 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 I don't know. That kind of rubs me the wrong way, too. I mean, I probably wouldn't have wanted to fight in Vietnam either, but a lot of people did. I was I was hanging out with a Vietnam two Vietnam veterans today and, and they brought that up. They didn't like it. Yeah, maybe that's he, like a proper. He's like, I was, I was slugging shit in a rice paddy and, and that motherfucker was back home being a pussy. And that's how they feel about it. You know, these guys went over there and their friends were killed and, and, they, and they literally gunned people down and on the other side of the world and they feel like this guy's a conscientious, conscientious, conscientious objector, excuse me. Uh, and, and that rubs a lot of them the wrong way. Yeah. What I, I like, like about Bernie... It's insulting because it's like, oh, you thought we wanted to come here? Like you thought that we were like, oh, hot dog, we're hopping on a you know, fucking helicopter plane to Vietnam. And you, you thought like, I think like um, intellectually you can look at it and be like, all right, yeah, he clearly objected to the war. He didn't want to go fight and kill people. Nobody wanted to go fight and kill people, so he found a way out of it. But now it's like, looking back, it's almost like the political like patriotism pressure of like, ugh, how could you elect that guy? Like, he didn't even fight for his country. You know? what I, even if oh, that's not the end. What I like about Bernie is I think he's the most honest guy in the race. Absolutely. Um, I think yeah, I that he's that. doing this because he aspires to make America better. Whereas, Absolutely. Agreed. When I look at like Clinton and Trump and Kasich, I think they're all doing greed. it because they want to be a part power. of history, greed, greed power, greed whatever. Power, yeah. it, it, Bernie has Bernie. the best motivations, but I just think he's going the wrong way. Are I you, think a lot you, of them you guys really get like, do you guys get stressed talking about this at all? Mm -mm. Not at all. Not like other like people do. I, I like even like I just like look at it and I get stressed out, and I'm not even American. Like I look at it, and I'm like, oh my god, like. Like, it, it, it seems like an SNL skit in some ways that Trump is, like, a forerunner to me. And yeah. uh, it's just because, like, to me, the guy's, like, a ridiculous TV host. You know what I mean? The guy has had, like, ridiculous, like, you know, business endeavors, you know, some that completely fail or not. The guy has, like, sued someone because they called him a millionaire, not a billionaire, and he sued <laughs> for a billion dollars. Yeah, like, true. It's, it, it, it's all, like, and, like, that's, like, you know, like to what some of you guys are saying, like that's the least worst guy, and like that to me is like stressful. Yeah, like, it I'm, is. Like, Especially reading, like, for you. Articles. I'm reading articles of like Bernie Sanders' first job. And they're like he's sixty five thousand dollars in debt. No wonder he, he connects so well with millennials. And like his first wife left him, and then he went on unemployment because he went to have her live in a shack. And he his first job was his second job was giving out 
registering people for food stamps. And I'm just like looking like my hands like get sweaty. You know what I mean? Dude, Bill, <laughs> um, Trump, sued, like... Trump sued Bill Maher for saying that he was the spawn of his mother having sex with an orangutan. And then, you know, and then like on the screen, they'd put like the orangutan, which is like orange hair and stuff next to Trump, like juxtaposed. And you're like, I see it. I see it. So then like <laughs> he, uh, he wrote this like he sued him. So there's paperwork and Bill Maher takes it. And he runs with it. He puts it on TV and it's like, you know, my client is indeed not the spawn of ha of his mother having sex with an orangutan. And uh, they had to go back and forth. So Bill Maher is like, I want to see your birth certificate that proves that you're not because he was a birther, which is one of the worst things about Trump. Maybe he thought Obama was born in Kenya or something. And uh, and then, you know, he's asking for the birth certificate. He's asking for the long form birth certificate that proves that he this mother didn't have sex with an orangutan. It was fantastic, but it's ridiculous. And and I, I see where you're coming from. Uh, Trump is a bit of a jackass in, in many ways. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, he's built his character up so long that now, like, he can't even not be it. His enemies, like, I hate his enemies so much that I want a jackass to go against him. I feel like I need one. I, I, he, he's a son of a bitch, but he's, he, he's a son of a bitch who hates the people and is hated by the people that I also hate. I feel like Hil Hillary Clinton, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, like Obama made health care the, the corner, cornerstone of his presidency. Hillary Clinton's going to make gun control the cornerstone of hers, and, and a big part of that is holding gun manufacturers responsible when some lunatic goes on a shooting spree. That's like holding Ford Motor Company hostage when uh, uh, liable when, when some guy has a goes on a, a, a crash spree. And, no, on purpose. Just, just make it terrorism. Make it, make it a guy getting in his car, cr cr going through a crowd in Vegas. You don't hold Ford Motor Company. You don't say, why does the Ford Excursion have a V10 engine in it? <laughs> why does it have 575 horsepower and 625 foot-pounds of torque? Let me show you how many horses that's actually equivalent to. And they, like, get up a big map. You don't do that. You don't talk about how many, like, RPMs uh, that the thing's making. But, but they do that to an AR-15. They say, look at this thing. It's spitting out fucking 500 rounds per minute of killing power. And, and go, they go on and on and want to hold Colt or uh, Daniel Defense or whoever the fuck uh, liable for that. What the fuck did they have to do with it? It's the asshole who went and did the bad thing, who committed the crime, who's responsible. What was yeah, the real the culprit? Thing about her. Who is it that's actually bad? Is it Lexus Sedans? What are we going on about? Come on, you must remember. Uh, it's the other ones, Infinity Sedans. Infinity I, and, and Sedans, I'll yeah. be I'll be honest, I never was in on that joke. I don't know what the fuck you guys were always going on about. I was I just, on the show. I don't know. Oh, what it was one of my favorite things. So apparently someone like killed someone with an Infinity Sedan. So we started making these like anti-gun arguments against infinity sedan saying that infinity i was never sedan, in on that joke they needed to be outlawed that infinity sedans are really ridiculous that they, uh, they they're you and way lefty too would powerful. go back and forth and i'd be like yeah infinity sedans anyway uh, i can't believe you didn't get the parallel between that and the gun argument i think i had went to the bathroom or something when that oh. inside joke originated because i never got the or you know zoned out maybe who knows what the fuck uh, but i was never in on that joke. i got a big kick out of that one it was one of my faves so Game of Thrones is coming out very soon. I have recently Ooh. caught up. I watched the past season, got you know, watched it How all over back again. Were you? Pardon? How far back were you? Oh, I was caught up. I rewatched the episodes. I've seen every episode of Game of Thrones three times and I've done the audiobooks. Um, I started back on uh, and I'm catching up. I'm gonna finish the current audiobook before the new season starts. So I'll be hundred percent on the books, hundred percent on the uh, uh, you know, the show, having watched every episode three times. And, uh, and I'm ready to see what's coming. I haven't watched a single teaser. I haven't watched any of the bullshit spoilers that they put out there. Um, I think Jon Snow's coming back. And everyone that don't, I'm closing my eyes before like Woody like nods knowingly or something. But I think Jon Snow's coming back. But I don't know for sure. You know, I, because you I haven't have looked into that stuff. I'm no, sure. I'm not going to spoil it because there's nothing to spoil because like the season ended where the book ended. So right. we no don't one know. can know a hundred percent. He hasn't written it yet. Oh, you could but totally know. All you got to do is go and look up the casting and see if Kit Harrington's on the on the bill. No, I haven't done that. I'm just talking about the like logically from the show. Like, there's they can't leave him dead. He has to come back. That's gonna. It's a song of ice and fire. You know. I, know. I think in the end it's going to be John and Daenerys plus, somehow to get together. R, R L. Uh, what is it? R plus. Um, R plus J equals L. R plus L, L equals J. J. R plus L equals J. What? Um, what is that? But. Song of Ice and I'll Fire. I'll talk to you later. It's kind of Song scary. of Ice and Fire could be just Jon Snow. It could, and I think it is. Yeah, it's yeah. not. Doesn't have to include Daenerys at all. Yeah, I don't think it does. I think Jon Snow think is the Song of Ice and Fire. Because Jon Snow, 
Um, Ned Stark is an extremely noble guy. So noble, he'll he'll suck up his own honor and get his own head cut off. Like, that's how committed to being noble and honorable he is. So much so that Ned would never, ever, ever fuck a whore when he's been married to his wife. He would never do that. And when... When his sister was kidnapped, Ilya, right? By no, the Targaryen, no. by the Tar no, the other one, the one that started the war. Yeah, yeah. When she was supposed to marry Robert Baratheon, and she got kidnapped Lena? by the Targaryen, the Mad King, before you know, before the show starts, that's what happened, and and that's when Robert Baratheon and Ned Stark went to war with the Targaryens to get her back. Because the Targaryens kidnapped Ned's sister and she was going to be the queen. What actually happened there was Ned's sister was in love with the Targaryen. She ran away with the Targaryen. And Ned Stark's sister and the Targaryen gave birth to Jon Snow. Yep. And then Ned got there first before Robert Baratheon. She turned to Ned. She gave him Jon Snow. And she said, you can't tell anyone about him because they'll kill him and you have to take care of him and raise him. So Ned took Jon Snow, brought him back to Winterfell and he was like, yep, I fucked a whore. She gave birth to this. This is my son. And even though his wife pleaded for him to get rid of it, he wouldn't get rid of it because that's his nephew. And his nephew is a Snow or a, a Stark and a Targaryen. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't even involve Daenerys. That's just... That's just him on his own. He is the Song of Ice and Fire. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to happen with Daenerys is I want Tyrion to fuck her on the back of a dragon flying through uh. the air. And that would make me happy. And that doesn't even have to be a Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> that could yeah, that be would the round song it all out. <laughs> get him on the back of a dragon. I'll tell you but what I, I, I want. This crazy theory about the end of, of Game of Thrones. Okay. And here's my Game of Thrones where I'm at. I read the first book. And then I watched the first season. And after watching the first season, I was like, that was so identical to the book that fuck the books. I'm on Showtime now. <laughs> okay. Whenever the show's out, that's where I'm at. They'll finish these shows before they finish those books. I'm happy with this. What this show has done is it's taken us, it's showed us things, it made us love something, and then it fucking killed it every single time. It shows you something, it makes you love it, and then it kills it. Now, one thing that it's made it made us care about more than anything else is who's going to sit on the throne? Who's going to be the one sitting on the throne? It's going to be Tyrion. It's going to be Jon Snow. Someone's going to sit on that throne. Who's it going to be? What's going to happen to Winterfell? What's going to happen to, uh, what's it called, uh, King's Landing? What's going to happen? I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. Because this is what happens in every single zombie movie from the beginning of time and every single zombie story. You saw those White Walkers. They're fucking relentless. They are going to keep coming and coming and they're going to kill everyone in their path and they're going to keep going and they're going to get all the way to King's Landing and they're going to fucking kill everyone and that fucking White Walker King is going to sit on the throne of King's Landing and maybe Jon Snow is a huge comeback, but Jon Snow will be nothing more than like ultimately a Rick Grimes with a small group of our characters that we have to hang on to because they're the last one and Bran's a fucking tree. So like we're going to care so much about this little group and just like in zombie movies, the only thing that ends the zombie apocalypse is quarantine and, and nuclear. And so the, the equivalent of that is the fucking dragons rolling through King's Landing in Winterfell and fucking fire blasting the entire thing. And George R. R. Martin's gonna be like, you fucking idiots. You knew exactly what this was. None of it fucking matters. Everything <laughs> burnt to the fucking ground. I can't believe you ever cared. Can't believe you ever loved these people. I've been <laughs> killing them off since book one. You thought I was gonna give you a happy ending, you fools? Burnt to the ground. Everything. You're just going to be happy that Tyrion's busting a nut into Daenerys on the back of a dragon at the end of the show. <laughs> as everything burns to the ground, you're going to stand up and be like, well, at least Tyrion got a good fuck out of it all. 
That's I, just my theory. Here's, <laughs> that's a great theory. I, I really like your theory. theory. Here's what I really want <laughs> out of next season. Here are some things that need to happen next season for me to like be a hundred percent satisfied, satiated with Game of Thrones. Um, Have you ever been sa satisfied with this show? Yeah, yeah. The, um, last season was the least satisfying season yet. Season um, one. Um, See, well, yeah, season one was not satisfying at all, but there were great moments. It was entertaining. Uh, last season uh, frustrated me. Here's what I want next season, though. I want the mountain to do some cool, badass mountain shit. Yes. I want him to smash, smash, smash. I want his weapon to be newer and cooler now. Give him a war hammer, like 50 pounds or something. I want him to do cool shit. I want Cersei to get some dirty, awful revenge against the High Sparrow. Well, she's going to do that with the mountain. Yeah, I'm hoping. Come together. I'm hoping. That's why I link those. But it's all about comeuppance with me. I want the people who have it coming to get it. Uh, Walder Frey, I'm still waiting on him to get his. I'm still waiting on him to fucking pay for what he did to Rob Stark and his, and, you know, his, 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 his unborn child and his wife and, and Catelyn oh, you know, and everybody. I, I want them to go back and just, just do something <laughs> awful to him. Just cut his eyes out or something, whatever the fuck. I need something bad. I need something bad to happen to those people who betrayed Jon Snow at, at Castle Black. I guess I could get over it if he just like rises up like the Messiah and they bow down and, and he and now he's like, you know, supercharged Jon Snow with like fire burning behind his pupils or whatever the fuck. I kind of want him to be godly also when he comes back. I want him to come back. I want him to be like uh, Neo in the Matrix when he like rises up. I was watching. I episode... want to be like Luke Skywalker, Return of the Jedi, force choking people. I think he's going yes. to spend several episodes as yeah, a Walter wolf. Frey. He, he will have possessed his wolf. That's where he went. His uh, spirit. With Bran. Yeah, yeah. That, that's. Think that's... he'll get those powers. Those. those he has them already. Powers. He has them already. He's a warg or whatever they call it, just yeah. like Bran is. And I, that's I... that's the next thing I really need next season. I need Bran to come back and to be cool. Yes. I need to be interested no, in Bran. No, no, Bran's a tree. No, Brand's, I, I need Brand, Brand needs to come back like fucking Jedi ma Jedi Master. He needs to be like controlling dragons with his mind. He needs no, to be controlling no, people tree. with his mind. Brand's a tree. You don't get it. Bran is a tree. That's him. That's we got the end of something. Brad will be a tree and he'll watch everything weather. Brand is not going to be a tree. He might control a dragon at some point, but he's always going to be that tree. You think he's that's all in he on is. the tree thing? <laughs> Brand right? will not be a tree. He's a tree uh, right now. He's not totally not Why a tree. He right? will he's not a tree. continue to be a tree, and he's not a tree in the strictest sense. But I, I yeah, Bran's a him. tree. So I'm going to that tree. That guy's like, oh, I was the tree. Now you're the tree, and he's like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm the tree. I can see everything. <laughs> Don't you want to see him warg into Hodor's mind, and suddenly when you have the body of a seven foot eight like behemoth who's not retarded anymore, eleven the power inch you would wield. That he, he can do addition, subtraction. He can do everything you can imagine. He's like, I he can pick up ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, at that point, why would you continue living your life as the tree boy? Wouldn't you just start hauling ass to the nearest village to just live your life as this Not giant? me. Well, I, 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 I like the Hodor thing, that, but he's got to be a dragon. What's that? He's got. I, I need Bran to start taking over dragons and like raising yeah. cities and shit. Yeah, that's Bran is on is on a consciousness where I think he doesn't need to live like a man's life anymore. He has the responsibility of being a tree now. So <laughs> he's kind of like, is there a lot of responsibility I, I there? <laughs> that Bran's big play will be like, like Daenerys will be like, well, I don't want to burn all of Winterfell to the ground because I want to sit on the throne. And Bran's gonna be like, bitch, the fucking throne's gone. I'm a tree. I'm taking your dragons. And I'm gonna fucking burn this thing to the ground. Well, he can so you get know, on the back, suck Tyrion's dick while I do it, or sit here and fucking wait till we get back. I think he's gonna, you know, have his ability to like take over regular human beings' minds at some point. Like, like he's still a kid. I feel like he's getting more and more powerful as we go. We skipped the whole uh, he season. Is that yeah, he, he will. He will be able to control humans. I he predict will be next. Year. He already did, didn't he? Already control Hodor. Hodor yeah. is retarded. Yeah, he did. Though. That's 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 easier. Oh, that's going to he, he he will be able to control humans. Yeah, but he'll always be a tree. He's not a fucking tree. <laughs> Why are you that's insisting he's a tree? Am I missing something? Because that's what happened. He went into the tree. I think you are really taking some of those visual cues too literally. I think so too because when I was reading the book, I did not picture at all what, that, what happened in the show. Like I pictured him like walking into a tree like a cutout almost, like an alcove in a giant tree trunk. I don't know if you pictured that, Kyle, when you were yeah, reading so when it. Yeah, so when, you, when he does it, he goes into the tree and like he becomes the new tree god. 
I think he's just seeing through the tree like a portal, like using that as an as an omniscient, not omniscient, but he's able he, to see yeah, through the, the eyes of George, all the trees, right? Yeah. George R. R. Martin, he's switching to new tree for like a couple months, and then he's going back to tree classic, and <laughs> Bran can go out and do his own thing. I what do you think Bran, Bran can't Odor. walk? Bran doesn't, <laughs> Bran's not going anywhere, he can, man. He, he, can, he can control a retarded guy to what throw him on his shoulder. Yes. You think Bran, imagine this. You're, you're a 10-year-old boy. Well, now you're 11. You don't have your legs. You can control anything you want in the entire world. Why would you ever bring your little vulnerable body out into the world? I'd control a hot wildling and just masturbate. But that's because we're men. We would be like, yeah, I need Hodor. He's got a big dick. I'd go to the nearest village and fuck. I but think I'd hop in the body like, of a woman just try it out. <laughs> yeah, that's what we would do, right? That's what we would well, I'm a whore now. Bran, <laughs> can't go back. I guess it was Bran, just like ran out of Bran is tree god now. Bran is on that level where he's like, I got a responsibility. I'm going to watch over everything. I'm going to be master of intelligence. Like, imagine this. Jon Snow comes back from the dead. He's master of ice and fire. And he's a fucking, you know, uh, like flaming Jesus. And uh, sounds like a really great gay stripper. But so he's flaming Jesus now, and uh, flaming Jesus, and, and Bran is like his eyes and ears. My couples dance. Bran could Bran like can do so much more by like controlling dire wolves and owls and telling telling Jon Snow what's happening. He'll get nothing by hopping on the back of some dude and having him bring his body around and flop him here and flop him there. What kind of range does he have? Is he like a remote control type situation? Like a, he's gonna like that drum. range is gonna get. Like 2.4 hertz, like we're talking about here. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I, that he's going to be able to control the dragons until, if he does, it's going to be like the last damn near happens. the very last scene in the entire yeah. series. See, they yeah. said he was going to be able to fly. Winterfell. And yeah, I interpret that fly, as dragons. I mean, there could I be Hawk or something as... lame, like the crow, but I, I thought he was talking about dragons. Um, I need well, a lot I like of to happen next year. I feel like the, you know, I mean... The the other Lannister girl died. You know she was poisoned. You got Jamie. Maybe Jamie will do something interesting this year. He's one of my favorite characters, but he just had a lame season last year. What I don't want is any more goddamn sand. A lame season because he lost his hand. <laughs> well, no, he, he lost the hand like a while back. He had a lame oh, season because he like goes to Dorne on that stupid fucking mission. Oh, and, the like, sea serpents. And get he and Bronn gets in a fucking get in a fucking sword fight with three like tiny women and, and struggle and almost and don't make it and. I rewatched that, was, that the other night and just cringe, cringe, cringe. I'm just, this is so stupid. But she's got two daggers and you got a long sword. Like, ha, have any of us ever had like a, a fight with a piece of PVC pipe or anything? The guy with the bigger piece, even yeah. if it's just this you much. You ever had a noodle difference. fight in the pool? Yeah. I ever had a noodle, noodle fight in the middle of a Walmart? Uh, yeah. We got, <laughs> I, we got asked to leave. You got into Texas. a noodle fight with those two girls in the middle of the Walmart. We were filming an episode. I, I like, I like noodles. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were, we was were his noodle named Dave Thomas? Yeah. We were asked to leave that Walmart, uh, not very politely either, uh, that night. No, that was after we were walking in, and you just, I don't know, where you were like, hey, hop in this uh, grocery cart. And I was like, all right, may as well. Like, I, I, seems like a nice guy. And so I hopped in, and you just immediately started sprinting fast towards could. the entrance of the Walmart as fast as you could with me in this thing. And you just ran me into a curve and just started laughing. And I was just thinking, like, I, I don't even fucking know this guy that well. What the shit is he? He just <laughs> tells me to get in here and then pushes me into the goddamn road. What the fuck? I was and hardcore, I man. I was fucking hardcore. I didn't give a shit. I was, was Yeah, because you weren't the one in the coach. I was happy to switch places. That's the thing. I was probably like, no, do me, do me. Like, <laughs> I, I remember we... Shit. We went around Target, and you guys convinced me to go in that, uh, the like, you know, little cart for old people, and we pretended that I was much older than I really am. <laughs> you pretended like you had an issue of some kind. Yeah, they thought they, they were too uncomfortable to confront you because they you went straight from you know oh that guy, guy's you know like thirty eight years old but he's pretending to be old to like. I don't want to go over there and ask that guy to get off because there might be something wrong with him and I'll look I'll be embarrassed. Like that you you were playing it off to where nobody was going to come up to you and tell you to get off because they just saw you and you're like, oh, he looks pretty normal, but God damn it, like, there could be something. Like, <laughs> just, 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 oh, that was so buzzed around for a long time on so that thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we ruined their pool. I think we should call the show right there. I, I, don't, I don't want any wasted. I want to leave them wanting more. I think we fucking nailed it. I love that. I agree. 
Uh, is there any? Is there I anything more to cover? Uh, it was just a random topic. Let's cut it right there. Fucking peak. Fuck four hours. Four hours didn't have to be hit. I loved it. Has to be. It's already one of the more. People wanting more. 